Hello and welcome to the MCG and to this match between Victoria and New South Wales. Lovely day here in Melbourne. And the Victorians have won the toss here, decided to bat first. And they're out there at the moment. New South Wales on the attack. McNamara into the action. Just looking at the Victorian lineup, there it is. On their side with Harvey going in first, and he also is the man out. McNamara struck when uh, he had him out LBW. This is how it happened. That one pitching around about middle and uh, just holding itself a little bit and probably just nipping the leg stump there. So out LBW, Steve Walpole, the umpire. So that Victorian lineup, uh, there it is. We've got Phillips. Harvey Elliott, Hodge and Harris, and then Herman McCook, Berry, Fleming, Sutherland, and Simon Cook. So that's the lineup today. Just one of them out so far. 14.4 overs have been bowled. They won for 58. And down from Sydney, the New South Wales side. Going to field first today. Emery's out there keeping wicket. He's also the captain, Chi Kui, and Rodney Davison. Michael Bevan, who's been in such tremendous form. And Trevor Bayliss, a dangerous player as well. Brad McNamara keeps getting wickets. Shane Lee, Neil Wax Maxwell there. Gavin Robinson, Phil Alley, who's operating from the other end at the moment. Holdsworth, who's had a little spell. So that's their lineup. So New South Wales have got Victoria one for 59. They're also looking to get themselves well secured at the top of this table in so much as I suppose they'd like to play the final or the uh, the matches in the finals at home. And there we are. You can see their situation is pretty good. This is their fourth match. They've got six points and a net run rate of 1.39, way ahead of anyone else. And Victoria at the opposite end, way down at the bottom there, just two points and... Uh, it's their net run rate. So Western Australia played five already, have six points. Queensland also have six points. So a good battle at the top of the table. And uh, a beautiful day down here in Melbourne today. There's been a lot of rain around just recently. A lot of problems keeping the square dry, and uh, that is the forecast. Lovely, fine, and sunny day. It's the slight sea breezes keeping it relatively cool. Oh, and uh, that one way down the leg side, and quite rightly, a wide. Well, Ali's just having a little bit of a problem. He's been over the front line a few times, and uh, that one really did. It was a full toss. He must have slipped out of his hand. Way down the leg side. Well, Richie Benno is with me in the commentary box. Good morning. Good morning, Tony. Morning, everyone. Wild, wild, wild. Bill Alley so far, second over. Hold a couple of good ones in his first over, but that's all. And, uh, well, the umpire is very lenient there on the basis of the way the playing condition is for the wide call. We're into the 16th over now. Run rate is just below four per over. Victoria have been having quite a horror run, but only a millimeter or two short of it. And uh, they need a good performance here today. Not that it's going to get them into the finals of the Mercantile Mutual Cup, but it will certainly restore uh, a bit of confidence as far as they're concerned. stretches Phil Alley is in one at the moment now that points table we showed you a moment or two ago the sleeper there I reckon is South Australia they've only played four but their net run rate in that column on the right gives them an opportunity if they win their next game to go ahead of Western Australia Western Australia's run rate is positive it's 0 0.10 and South Australia's 0.42 it's just the fact that they need another two points that matters 
and uh, if they were able to get that and keep their run rate up then they'd go ahead of WA and of Queensland who have minus figures in that column uh, it's a big match coming up for South Australia that one so another run there everyone absolutely vital here really need to launch themselves for a big total this next week match is the one that involves the South Australian side and that's against New South Wales as well so it's a tough one for them the mercantile mutual match Sunday the 20th of February and South Australia will be desperate to get themselves the two points and uh, secure themselves a position in the finals. So that, take a note of that number. That match uh, is being played in Sydney. It is New South Wales versus Australia, Sunday the 20th. toss but uh, right off the base of the bat that time this is inning so far as well, it's been quite a consistent run rate around about two and then all of a sudden three good overs from the eighth over and, um, very good over over number 14 and then a wicket fell so slow things down a little bit Toss. He's having all sorts of problems with over pitching at the moment. Poses in efforts to try and get it up. He's going just a little bit too far. Victoria one for 64. The Olympic Winter Games on Channel 9. Tonight, join a massive worldwide television audience at the spectacular opening ceremony of the 17th Olympic Winter Games. The Australian team join over 2,000 athletes from 65 nations as the Olympic flame is lit, signalling the start of 16 days competition at this truly international festival of sports. The Winter Olympics commence 8.30 tonight, only on Channel 9. One for 64 here at the MCG. Victoria have lost Ian Harvey over W to McNamara for 35 from only 46 balls. Phillips 15 from 44. Harvey did the bulk of the scoring. Interesting watching him. He was um, playing some nice strokes until Phil Alley came on. When Alley got a couple on line and on the right length, Harvey had all sorts of problems against him. And uh, there's no doubt he was moving before the bowler let go of the ball. It seems to have been come, uh, become something of a fetish around Australia at the moment. Batsman who moving before the balls let go <laughs> run away towards the boundary but it'll still be pulled in pretty quickly by the fielder at um, extra cover that's the game uh, which took place here on friday last friday february 11th bill Laurie's birthday not a good uh, moment for him. 123 Victoria made from 37.5 overs in response to Western Australia, 7 for 173. Tim Zura, 48, not out. Ian Harvey, 3 for 36. So Harvey is in form, but not all of the Victorians can say the same thing. So not a figure on that scorecard there, even approaching Bellori's age. On the 11th of February. Aaron Ramshaw not playing in this match. 
got a problem with uh, his hand. the points table we've uh, just picked out there the three top teams New South Wales the leaders they will go through to the final if they remain leaders and then it'll be a battle between the second team and the third they will fight it out in a preliminary final and the winners of that match will go in against the top team uh, New South Wales have a good chance of being the top team they also have a magnificent net run rate of 1.39 as I say, the sleepers are down there on line four. South Australia, four points from four games and a good run rate. So McNamara doing a good job once again. He's uh, operating from the southern end. So ready. Trapped Harvey LBW for 35. Six runs from that over, it's one for 70. Here, Harvey out for 35, Phillips is 18. Matthew Elliott is seven. It's a slightly inexperienced look about uh, the batsmen still to come problems the Victorians but they have a lot of good young cricketers Lee Hodges one of them one for 70 now Phil Alley has been uh, given his marching orders out there Kevin Robson is uh, going to be the bowler he's an off spinner but Phil Alley all over the shop which is a pity because he's a very good bowler and I thought was the star of the New South Wales attack the other day yes he's very tall and uh, when he gets it right he's very difficult to handle but uh, those figures there, I think, tell the story. Just two overs, no wicket for 14. And uh, when you consider how well the others have done, he's uh, let things slip a little bit and slip a little bit here. So I think this is probably the only decision that uh, Phil Emery could make. He's decided to take him out. He may just try him at the other end after McNamara's had a bit of go. There he is. He's a huge man. Oh, straight away, bang on target. And... Uh, Batsman was down the wicket there, so that could so easily have slipped past. And Emery may well have been act into the action there as well. Elliot, the left-hander on strike, and off spin up, bowling from over the wicket, which is an attacking move. But it won't have escaped Phil Emery's uh, attention that Matthew Elliot is pretty good against pace. One of the best young players around uh, Australia is a, a young opening batsman, but. Uh, He's not quite so strong with his footwork against spin. He should be desperate to make a score, young Matthew Elliott. He's had a bit of a tough time of it. Yes, he scores 26, 14, 16 and 6 in the one-day competition this season. Had a pretty tough time of it. That highest score was from last season. It's better into the gap that time. That's clever bowling from Robertson. He's kept the ball to the left-hander, pitching on either leg stump or middle and leg, which is where Elliot isn't quite as strong. He's a good, strong player on the offside. He's got the right hand at Wayne Phillips. But this is an indication that Elliot has had to give himself a little bit of room. He's got himself outside leg stump now, so he can push the ball away on the offside. So the right hander on strike now. Phillips facing up. Faces the ball well. Two runs from the over. It's one for 72. won the toss decided to bat first and uh, Phillips went out there with Ian Harvey and the only wicket to have fallen so far is that of Ian Harvey this is how he was out McNamara was the bowler and uh, he was given out LBW the umpire there Steve Walpole from Victoria up goes the finger 
and that's the end of Ian Harvey for 35. Those are the bowling figures so far. Some quite tidy bowling figures. McNamara, the wicket taker, one for nine of three. Quite a few buys, leg buys, no balls and wides there. So the Victorian is just struggling a little with the ball. Direction, the New South Welshman just struggling a little bit with the ball. In terms of those wides, a lot of them emanate from uh, Ali, who had a really tough time of it. He's been taken out of the attack. Phillips out there at the moment. Maybe looking to lift his rate a little bit. He's on 19 at the moment. Elliot has eight. That dismissal of uh, Ian Harvey underlines what I was pointing about earlier about bats from moving before the ball's bowled. I simply can't work out what they're doing. I've seen that happen with three or four young players around Australia this year. That shuffle across the crease. I don't know if coaching's changed since uh, I was a kid, but it was drilled into us, do not move before the bowler lets the ball go. There's a very good reason for that. You have no idea where the ball is going until it leaves his hand. certainly wouldn't mark down Wayne Phillips grip of the bat as being completely orthodox some of the uh, older watchers will remember Trevor Bailey holding the ball just like that and holding the bat in that fashion hands a long way apart some players uh, hold the bat with their hands together Gives them a, a wristy touch. I haven't seen uh, hands quite that wide apart for a long time. This um, most uh, recent that I can think of, Richie, would be Asif Iqbal. He was about as bad. When I say bad, he was a magnificent player. And normally that sort of grip would suggest that the batsman plays most of his shots on the onside uses the bottom hand a lot whips the ball away from the stumps across the onside and uh, we've actually seen Phillips on one or two occasions get himself into a bit of trouble here today trying to whip the ball away especially on slow wickets which this is he, um, got caught and bowled for no ball he popped one in the air between the fielders as well but over the years it's worked for him well, with uh, things like that grip and stance which are part of the fundamentals. I suppose it's a case of do whatever makes you comfortable. Don't move before the ball's bowled. Ah! Half-hearted appeal there from Mr. Cover. There's two off that over. It's one for 74. Welcome back. It's Phillips and Idiot out there at the moment. One for 74. Robinson continuing with his off spinners. This is a mercantile mutual match. Lots of nice signs on the ground, mercantile mutual signs. And uh, those are the targets on the screen. Hit the sign and uh, the player will receive a hundred and forty thousand dollars and if Wayne Phillips hits it I'll take back everything I said about his grip one for 76 here at the moment but that is a great competition for the players see the size of them in relation to the side screen and that one is at uh, deep square deep point one on each side of the wicket and two on either side of uh, the side screen but it's a splendid competition not only 140,000 for the player who hits it but uh, the viewer who has telephoned and uh, picked out the name of the team where they think the player will hit the sign and win $14,000. Very nice. 
big appeal there. That one, uh, oh, was it just outside off stump or did it turn back sufficiently to miss the leg stump? It's actually it's not a bad little uh, little wager to have right now, picking up the phone. After all, it's uh, pretty easy to do. There's uh, just this match. Then there's the Adelaide match. Or the, sorry, the... Um, the New South, the New South Wales South Australia match, and then the final. So as the games reduce, of course, uh, there are less teams to choose from. A well fielded. Just getting back to that viewers competition. There's the number you have to call just to register your interest in this competition, and that jackpot is now at fourteen thousand. Very nearly carried. Five runs off the over. He will be the bowler. He had problems in the match up in Sydney last week. Didn't bowl all that much, but Emery was fortunate. He had six bowlers in the side. It was a good thing if uh, you could do that. He bowled just three overs last week, none for 20. And Emery was um, able to use five other bowlers. Plenty of insurance there. To Shane Lee. Hold him, first ball, what a start for him. Well, perhaps this is going to be his day. Straight through him, back go the stumps. And boy, hasn't that brought a smile to his face? Certainly more than happened last week where he had problems with no balls and uh, wayward deliveries. And here today, Matthew Elliott has succumbed. Well, it looked as though it was an absolute cracker of a ball. Don't think it found the inside edge. It just uh, moved off the seam, and uh, that is a great start for Shane Lee. Matthew Elliott out for 11, two for 79. He's been a youngster, a highest score of an undefeated 43 there, but a good strike rate. And uh, don't worry about that average just yet. He's got a long way to go. Just uh, noticed there that Bradley Hodge, born on the same day as David Boone, so who knows? Let's have another look at the wicket, and uh, this brought a smile to the face of the bowler, Shane Lee. First ball. See that one just slipping through the gap between bat and pad there. Lovely angle, that one. another angle of uh, the ball which dismissed Matthew Elliott. Well, it certainly did something either in the last fraction of a second as it was coming through the air, some very, very late swing or movement off the seam because he was playing it round about uh, middle and off and it finished up hitting leg. There he goes again. That one through the offside. Phillips turning it on here. He's uh, placed that one nicely. Very small man, but he does time the ball pretty well. There's another example of he's right down the wicket there, very quick on his feet. Just plays that one through the gap on the offside. Now to our Adelaide viewers, the news here is that at the Melbourne Career Ground, Ian Harvey and Matthew Elliott are both back in the pavilion. This is the last delivery. Shane Lee is the bowler, and uh, it's a pretty good slower ball. Deceived the batsman Wayne Phillips. And Shane Lee has picked up the wicket of Matthew Elliott with the first ball of this spell. This is his second over. He's just coming to the end of it. Off that over, it's two for 83. Hodge out there with Phillips at the moment. And 
and uh, that New South Wales side unchanged from last week. Gilchrist, the 12th man. Phil Emery out there keeping at the moment. He's the captain. Michael Bevan. He's had a tremendous time just lately. He's in the side. Just uh, going back to Ian Harvey and Matthew Elliott. The two wickets to have fallen so far. That one chopped down to get another run there. I might just uh, show you those quickly. Ian Harvey was out. LBW. This is how it happened. McNamara the bowler. And uh, once again, an early movement there. And McNamara had him out for 35 or 46 balls. Not a bad partnership. They put on 58, those two. Wayne Phillips and Ian Harvey. And then it was Matthew Elliott, bowled by Shane Lee. This is how it happened. As Richie Benno said, just a little bit of movement there. Fraction movement was very full, very difficult to pick, but it certainly opened him up a little bit. Went straight through the gap and hit the stumps. That was his first ball, so a good start for Shane Lee. And score now two for 85. the over two down for 86 Phillips on strike and just pushed him it on this is the points table New South Wales doing very well they're uh, on top with six points and uh, the sleepers down there South Australia have only played four matches, so they could get up to six as well. But have a look at their net run rate. If they manage to get themselves up to six, South Australia could well find themselves in the playoff match. It looks as if New South Wales are going to be in the fin final, and uh, they will probably host at New South Wales. So that's the situation. A very exciting game coming up between South Australia and New South Wales. And Western Australia and Queensland there both already have their six points. In the commentary box now, Michael Whitney, and with him is Bill Laurie. Thank you, Tony Gregg. Yes, next Sunday at the Sydney Cricket Ground, New South Wales versus South Australia. That will be a cliffhanger for South Australia. They're in very good form, South Australia, in both the Sheffield Shield competition and the Mercantile Mutual Cup. Mercantile Mutual has a qualifying final, so second and third play off for the final position. New South Wales versus South Australia next weekend at the Sydney Cricket Ground. New South Wales, the form team this summer. But that'll be a very good match if South Australia can get up with a very good percentage of net run rate of 0.42 there. So they could go, if they win, they go on top of uh, Western Australia and Queensland. That's going right down to the wire this summer. Meanwhile, here, Lee doing a very good job for New South Wales. A very promising cricketer, Shane Lee. Good athlete. New South Wales find these athletes. He's a handy batsman, a good bowler. He's knocked over Matthew Ollie at first ball here. And he's in that ball to move back off the seam. We've seen very little movement this morning, but Lee getting one to move back there to receive cut back in from off to leg. Victoria in a good position. It's Two for 86. Phillips on 26, struggling to score. Hodge on two. We've talked about the prizes for our viewers and the players. 140,000 hit the sign today, but also for the people in the crowd. If you take a catch, it's worth $100 cash in hand today. So all the young kids are getting in the front row. They're smart in Victoria. Just waiting for the ball to come over the fence. They have to hang on to the catch. You saw the guy in the blue short shirt drop a sitter in Hobart. And Hodge hit the ball over mid-wicket for six. It's good running by Bradley Hodge. He's very quick between the wickets. Two off the over. Two for 88. Wayne Phillips, captain today, won the toss, elected to bat. He's 27 off 67. Yeah. It's 
it's through there at square leg they'll run two and good morning michael whitney morning bill good morning to all our viewers tuning in from around australia and a very good contest out here this morning the victorians were i thought off to a slow start then a little bit of a flurry by harvey and phillips harvey lost his wicket matthew elliott come in and was out to shane lee's first ball and now this young man hodge who's had a tremendous summer for the victorian team he's made a lot of runs only a young fellow 19 years of age looks very composed very good athlete it's well played the late cut the whip there from gavin robertson davis and the fieldsman they run three hodge turning blind which is strange young guys they go to these institutes the vis the ais he'll be going to this year bradley hodge and they still turn blind one of the fundamentals of running between the wickets yes we'll have a look here look at wayne phillips playing that back cut and up in the top of your screen there we'll see oh, just not enough time with the spinner bowling gavin robertson bowling from the members end He's had a very good summer since uh, coming into the team on a more regular basis. And obviously uh, cast doubts about the re-emergence of effervescent all-rounder Greg Matthews. Getting some turn here today. It's a dry pitch. Yep. I'd squeezes him out just uh, through the point region for single. It's a very important partnership for Victoria. Phillips has occupied the crease for a long time. This is the 24th over for 28. So he has to bat, set his sights on batting through now. At the other end, Bradley Hodge is a fine young stroke player and he'll run well between the wickets. He'll certainly try to lift the run rate. And that one short and wide, punched out to Brad McNamara, the sweeper. That's eight off that over. Victoria in their 24th over, two for 96. Victoria well placed with wickets in hand to score 220 they bat well it's a beautiful day it's around about 28 degrees bright and sunny the run rate 4.01 you'd hope that it would lift in the final overs with wickets in hand sun bathed mcg absolutely magnificent melbourne day hoping for a bit more of a crowd to come in to watch this game you can understand it won't be a great crowd. Victoria cannot make the finals and have been disappointing in the last two matches against Tasmania and Western Australia. They blew their chance of playing in the final really at Bell Reeve. And the knitting's out today and the members. The Sunday papers. And the autograph books as well. Some Melbournians there with their shirts off taking in a few of the rays of the sun shane lee continuing oh and beats the bat one swing away a little bit late bradley hodge looking to work that one down to third man it's customary shot of batsmen in one day cricket so that one started outside off stump kept going a good look at this ball from the stump cam see him opening the face of the bat there but swinging away a little bit too wide for him He's suspect there, like most batsmen, that's sort of stump. He's far better off when he plays straight, Bradley Hodge. He's a very good cutter. The Victorians have been steady. They um, started steadily and they've uh, had one or two very good overs. It's about, uh, what, five or six overs over the six runs per over, and that's what's needed. There was the two wickets. Wickets of Harvey and Elliott. That's a good start. If you, if you continue on, they're well placed. The halfway mark. Yes, I think the Victorians would be looking at a score in excess of 220 at the moment. Of course, the wicket looks to be very good. Nice and flat. Not too many devils in it. And uh, I'm sure the New South Wales team with their competitive batting lineup. Anything under that score uh, is never easy to get, but certainly well within their grasp. This pitch is an interesting pitch. All summer it's been better to bat first. 
will slow down as the day goes on. It's hard and it's almost like rock like. And it's quite true, but it's a little bit slowish, and as the day wears on, it gets scuffed up a bit. Maybe it'll be a bit slower by your shots. Won't vary all that much. Big shout, that's close. And three for week by. It's good running by Phillips. That must have been very close. Four off the over. It's two for 100. Shane Lee's bowled very well. He's done a little bit with the ball. Clean bowled Matthew Elliott first ball, the one that swung back a bit. This must have been reasonably close. Have a look at it again. Well, if he didn't hit it very, very close, maybe just a fraction high. It's that ball just hitting Hodger on the knee roll, and uh, usually that indicates that the ball may have gone over the stumps, but if you look at the position of Bradley Hodge's front foot, he's right on the white line, right on the cruise line. It's knocked down by Maxwell, but he concedes a run. Phillips slips over. In fact, it was Hodge that slipped over. Have another look at that LBW shout there from Lee. Just have a look at Hodge's front foot. He's right on the white line there, playing across the line of the ball, trying to force out onto the onside. Maybe just... A shadow of a doubt it may have bounced over the wicket. It's well bowled by Robertson. Hodge uh, had to check the shot there, looking for the drive, beaten in flight. Robertson getting a, just a little bit of turn. Yeah. Cuts well, brilliantly fielded by Davison at backward point. He's very committed, Rod Davidson. He comes from the Ramwick Club in Sydney, along with his teammate Richard Chiqui. You see him committing his body here. Good piece of fielding. Fielded superbly last weekend for New South Wales against Western Australia. Very good, committed young cricketer. Two for 103. At her end. Oh, he slogged. He could be out. Mid-off coming around. He'll get to it. What a very good catch. Wayne Holsworth, Bradley Hodge, just a break in concentration there. Tried to hit it over the infield. Lee gets his second wicket, but certainly a classic catch from Wayne Holsworth. Well, magnificent effort there, and I think the New South Wales players would be very happy to see the end of Bradley Hodge. He's a very good young player looking to put that one, I think, straight, but catching an outside edge, and Holdsworth making a lot of ground. And have a look at this, the full dive. Never took his eye off the ball and holds it up in triumph. Absolutely magnificent catch by Wayne Holdsworth. Congratulated by his teammate, Richard Cheekwee. That's the end of Bradley Hodge for 10. Victoria lose their third wicket for 103. Bradley Hodge out for 10, and New South Wales just getting on top. Victoria were well placed, but they didn't need to lose that wicket. And Lee doing a good job. Going nice and straight. Another look at that last dismissal. You see Wayne Holdsworth, he's made 20... 25 metres and superb catch. Did not take his eyes off the ball. Hat, sunglasses and a happy man. Well, that's a real crucial breakthrough for New South Wales and as Bill Laurie quite rightly said, not a good shot from young Bradley Hodge. His job was to stay there and push the ball around. Now Victoria find themselves losing their third wicket. And David Harris on the strike. Left-hander from Richmond. Back in the side, he played on Friday against Western Australia. He's beat, beaten outside the line. Wayne Holsworth, good athlete, and a very, very good catch. He's very quick across the ground, but he judged it to perfection. There's another look from a different angle. See Hodge here trying to go over the top of the infield and. Holdsworth's called the ball. I didn't realise Richard Chiqui was that close. Obviously, Holdsworth's called his catch, and Richard Chiqui backed off. See Wayne Holdsworth making a lot of ground in the full-length dive. Absolutely superb effort by the New South Wales pace bowler. David Harris will need to consolidate. David Harris... Age 27, only two matches. This is his second match. Captain of the Richmond Cricket Club in Melbourne. Left-handed batsman. And a little bit
little bit of responsibility on his shoulders today. Coming in after the dismissal of Bradley Hodge. And that was a wicket that New South Wales were very happy to get. And his chip set down to mid on, doesn't get a single. Well, a lot of pressure now on Wayne Phillips to bat through. He's on 35 off 74 balls faced, the Victorian captain today. Has this has been the case in the last three games for Victoria. They get themselves into a reasonable position and the wheels fall off, so they need to consolidate again as the overs tick by here. No boundaries for Wayne Phillips as yet. Beautiful day. Conditions are ideal for both teams. off that over the 27th three for 104 Wayne Phillips on strike this glides it back with a point past Davison now pick up two Robertson just giving the batsman a bit of width the last two overs Robertson five overs 5.1 overs now we're going for 21 yes yeah, a bit tad short and just a sensation wide and that's giving Wayne Phillips the opportunity to cut and, and pierce the field on the offside. He's got protection on both sides of the field now. Phillips looking to cut again but on a little bit quicker, a little bit fuller. Cuts off the stumps this time. Man at deep point to do the fielding. New South Wales always field well. One of their strengths over many, many years. They've been a brilliant fielding side. And full point, points to their coach, Steve Rickson. He's maintained the standard. Maxwell Brian field anywhere. Shane Lee, good outfield, a good arm. Neil Bevan, of course, a magnificent fieldsman. Emery himself, good solid wicketkeeper, the captain. They don't give much away. That's the way it should be at this level. It's of course the younger players that have come into the side. Cheekwe, Davidson. Excellent hands, Richard Cheekwe. He's a superb slip fielder. Oh. Rod Davidson we've seen already today in the game against Western Australia last weekend. Committing his body. Uh, not frightened to dive and thrust the hand out. Quite sharp across the field. Gavin Robertson, the man bowling, is a very good fielder as well. David Harris, a um, bit edgy. Now his second match. Very good district cricketer for Richmond. District competition. A solid batsman. And score big hundreds at uh, district level. Let's see over bowled. Three for 107. The member stand on the right. Shane Lee to Phillips who drives but doesn't beat the bowler. New South Wales still with plenty of men inside the circle. Five, in fact, supporting the wicket keeper. And that's good captaincy because Phillips um, having trouble getting the ball through the field. There's the, the ring of three on the offside. On side, there's just the two, this forward square leg and the whitish mid on, supporting the man at deep fine leg. Pick up a single, well certainly it's a good pitch, it's true. Lee's got one or two to move off the seam and Robertson spun one but not sharply and you look at it, it's ideal, there's no grass there at all, it's almost like concrete. This was the pitch that was used on Friday after Almost three inches of rain on Thursday. The ground recovered beautifully. And uh, Tony Ware has just about prepared the perfect one-day pitch here. Yes, it looks very similar to most of the one-day wickets I've played on here at the MCG over my career. Very good one-day pitch. Tony Ware, excellent curator. Takes a lot of pride in his job. I'm sure he'd be pretty keen to get the outfield growing now for the... Australian rules summer coming up, but there's a look at the the wicket, full length, and uh, the MCG an absolute pitcher. It is considering that it's still um, recovering from the concerts, 
some of the outfield still a bit rough hasn't quite come back 100% but all in all Tony Ware's done a good job so our ball and Harris gets it away David Harris is off the mark and he'll need to bat well here today Victoria going to reach 200 plus plenty of overs left but they just lost their momentum with the ball of two wickets Harris um, Mill fighter at the other end, Phillips, a worker of the ball. Here's Harris taking nine deliveries to get off the mark. Just flicking that one down onto the onside. Slower ball from Shane Lee. He'd be relieved to have one run on the board. Wayne Phillips, well, he really has a big job ahead of him now. He has to stay there for the duration of the dig. Really try and put his side in a good position. Scamper through for a single. Not too many worse deliveries from the New South Wales. That's McNamara at mid-wicket. They're bowling very straight. Lee once again close to the stumps and bowling stump to stump. He has to work that from that off stump to mid-wicket. He beats mid-wicket and knocks it away and they pick up a single. But they're not bowling too short or too full in New South Wales. Very good performance once again. New South Wales have uh, won eight. Victoria have won six. Harris gets some thigh pad on that. They go through for a league by. Four off the over, three for 111. Here's your chance to experience the divine Miss M. He's the boogie-woogie, the boy, come and be. Bette Midler's greatest hits. 14 beautiful songs from Do You Want to Dance to... Best of Bet Midler, including the Rose and the number one smash. Bet Midler's greatest hits. It's your best bet yet. 3 for 111. It's good morning to Simon O'Donnell and Tony Gray. Thank you, Bill. And uh, yes, that's the score. 3 for 111. And Phillips causing a few problems here for. The New South Welshman, 80 balls for his 40. It's not very quick, but uh, he's still there, so he'll be able to lift the run rate. Harvey Elliott and Hodge back in the pavilion. Robertson's going to continue. No wicket for 22, his figures. Nice placement again, so the city is over this one that's a good shot driven try to beat the mid off down there but he's quite wide just the single our Brisbane viewers and uh, to this mercantile mutual cup match here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Victoria won the toss and they decided to bat first against New South Wales and that's the score. Three for 113. Phillips is on 41. Harvey Elliott and Hodge are all out. And Harris has joined Phillips. And that's nicely swept away. And Harris getting that one away down towards the boundary. Into the fence it goes too. Good shot. That's the first boundary in 16 overs. And so Victoria batting first. There's the sweep shot. Nicely played right off the beat of the bat. And uh, on this good pitch. Dry outfield. Surprisingly dry actually when one considers how much rain there's been down here. South Wales side captain by Phil Emery there it is Bill Crest's the 12th man the same side as the last side that represented New South Wales in this competition so seven runs from that over it's three for 41 81 balls he's faced and Shane Lee is going to continue two for 13 his figures or five overs in a good performance by him 
Let's have a look at the dismissals now. First man out was Ian Harvey. This one very, very adjacent. It's going to take middle and leg stump without doubt. Steve Walpole agreed. Shane Lee, his first wicket for the day. Matthew Elliott just drifted that one back a little late. Matthew Elliott played all around it. He was gone for 11. Shane Lee's first wicket. Good leader Harris now. Forward and giving it the full face of the bat. And Brad Hodge was the next man. Lovely catch from Wayne Holdsworth. Hodge was gone for 10. Made good ground to this. Well to his left. Full length dive. Just above the grass. An absolute ripper. Three for 103, Victoria, at that stage. Shane Lee's been the man to do all the damage. Two for 13. Brett McNamara, one for 11. The other wicket taker. Bill Ali's been a touch off line, but New South Wales, in general, doing a pretty good job. Listen, just to bring uh, our Brisbane viewers up to date with uh, the points table. There it is, New South Wales on top. This is their fourth match. They have six points. And so they look like going straight through to the final. Look at that net run rate, 1.39. And uh, the other two that will play, it looks at the moment, is the play in the elimination final. Those two sides, Western Australia and Queensland, at the moment will play each other. The winner goes through to the final. However, look at South Australia there. They, the danger side, they've got four points, one match to go, and their net run rate is very good. So a battle seems to be merging there for that third position in the Mercantile Mutual Cup competition. So, uh, just again, South Australia on four points. They play against New South Wales shortly. If they can get that to six and they retain that net run rate, they'll be right in line there to uh, knock Queensland out of contention. That is the next match, the Sydney Career Ground, New South Wales versus South Australia. And the South Australians get two points. That is the question. Sweepers out there, so you'll only get one for that. Phillips playing the anchor role here, 42 of 82 balls. Just moving on a little bit there and Lovely piece of footwork. Back knee on the ground. Kept his balance, kept his eye on the ball. Placed it exceptionally well. The so five from that over, it's three for 123. Three for 123, 31 overs have been bowled. This is a 50 over match. Phillips is still out there and still Herman, McCook, Berry, Fleming, Sutherland, and Simon Cook to come. So uh, there are a few down that order there who could swing the bat. Three for 123. Robinson about to start his eighth over. No wicket for 29. He's decided to go around the wicket now. Harris on 11. Having a little look down towards square leg. That uh, mercantile mutual signs down there. It's worth 140,000 today. Wouldn't you just love to get hold of a good one over mid-wicket and hit that right there? A few questions asked whether you shared it with your teammates, I might add. way in general and I'm sure players especially with the amount of money being played play Sheffield Shield cricket domestic one day cricket they'd be a bit keen to put all of it in their own bank account a lovely little bonus covered as well it looks as if, look if they're really about to get stuck in here it's a bit of 
foot movement there from David Harris. Batting with a lot of confidence. It's when he plays best is when he gets on with it. There's a lot of confidence in the own ability. Just wide of extra cover and back for the second. there from the Victorians putting pressure on the outfielder making him have to pick up and throw very quickly caused a fumble and that's an extra run good one day cricket that one spun back very well bowled lucky to get away with that four from the over three for 127 and 32 overs have been bowled Victoria won the toss and um, this is what they've done so far they have to get a few more I think good pitch out there dry outfield and uh, now Holdsworth back into the attack. He's operating from the southern end. Over the top. It's just a little slow, this pitch, Simon. That's, uh, I think, probably why they're struggling a little bit with those drives. I mean, a lot going over the infield and falling short of the outfielders. When they've been doing that, Wayne Phillips is trying to hit this ball pretty straight and he's had to adjust his shot halfway through. And that would indicate that the wicket is a little slower than what the batsman would like. Just finding it hard to fit through, hit through the line of the ball. This is going to be a nice little challenge, this for Holdsworth. He's one of those bowlers who can be a little erratic. But it's very important, having bowled quite tightly, actually, earlier today, that uh, he continues that way now. Yes, after a tour of experience to England during the winter months. Wayne Holdsworth probably hasn't had the year he would have liked. I'm sure that experience will start paying off at some stage. He's a hard worker, good competitor, and bowl sharp. So if he can get it all together, keep his confidence up, we might see bigger honours for Wayne Holdsworth. It's well played in the air again. That's that chip shot going way down towards the square leg boundary. Just another two again, another example of uh, shipping the ball over that infield. I think he was perhaps trying to hit that way over the boundary, but uh, it didn't get that far. Just got it in the air and look at this, just chipping it up. Just a little slow, the wicket. A little shot here too. David Harris is meant to play it there. He did want to chip it and like he didn't get it too well. Everyone around the country will no doubt uh, be aware that tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day and uh, the Variety Club of Australia have that magnificent little heart which is available through Woolworths, Westfield and uh, all selected outlets around the country and have a look at him. The number one Valentine in the world. He's already got his heart, no doubt taking it home to his wife. And uh, what's he reading there? Yes, he's reading his own book. Quick wit. And so uh, have a look at those, uh, look out for those little badges. The uh, shape of a heart. A nice little uh, Prezi on Valentine Day. Three for th 131. 33 overs, three for 131. So uh, Valentine's Day, one has to come up with uh, a little present of some sort and um, definitely have to have a heart so don't forget to purchase one of those hearts it uh, goes towards a good cause the variety club of australia of course uh, they give all the funds they raise to children's charity well simon i suppose you'll be going out shopping yes tony i will but the great thing i've learnt this morning is how to clarify what 
particularly the present means um, whether your relationships on good grounds or bad grounds now if it's a great romance you're probably going to get some Hague's chocolates and milk chocolates and dark chocolates so that sort of means that your partner thinks a hell of a lot of you but if he gives you a uh, we'll come back to this very important topic if he gives you a block of fruit and nut chocolate you're probably in a little bit of trouble this applies to both he's and she's does it in the world we live in today it definitely does so what does a red rose mean then chips safely for one a red rose means you're getting on pretty good, and I think about six dozen means you're getting on real, real good. So the pink rose, of course, is for friendship. What else can you do? A real bad one you don't want. It's a Valentine's guard card saying, with thanks. It's meant to be a day of love. You don't want the one signed, with thanks. Two of that over. Not a bad crowd either today. This is a very big stadium and the crowd tends to get lost. It's not a huge crowd, but uh, you can get a lot of people into this ground and very often it goes almost unnoticed. So quite a few folk have come down. It's a lovely day down here for those of you who are in Melbourne or in the surrounding areas, it's uh, not a bad spot to be. We look as if we've got a good game of cricket on our hands. Plenty of youngsters down here collecting autographs and waiting for the opportunity to take a catch in the deep. Oh yes, good catch. That one hit the edge and went a long, long way. Holesworth dragging that bat out and uh, that was a good wicket. Nicely taken too. Emery went way to his right there, caught it with two hands, so Holdsworth has struck. A real reward for persistence here for Wayne Holdsworth. He's bowled a good line and length. He's reaped a reward. Bill Emery, the New South Wales captain, taking a good, solid catch. Wayne Phillips was there for a lot of deliveries and he really needed to bat through the innings. He'll be disappointed with that. He's gone for 46. Victoria, four for one, three, three overwhelming. I Am Australian was created by a group of Australians who believe in the future of this unique country of ours. And it's not profit or politically motivated. Please phone this number now if you'd like to know more or to voice your support. Travellers once went to airports, Hong Kong or Singapore for the best duty-free deals. Nice and solid. Richard Herman is the new man out there. He's uh, joined Harris. He's 26 years of age. He's going to be looking to improve all those scores there. The strike rate, the average, the lot. Well, this is why he's there. This was quite a wide delivery. He dragged Phillips out there, very, very thick edge there, nicely taken to Emery going to his right, nice and safe, good solid catch. That's in the air, and that's out as well, chipped that one straight and mid on. So Herman out for a duck, Davison the man doing the fielding there, so that's very disappointing. Again, that slow wicket coming into play. So once again, Holdsworth too, into the action, have a look at it. So a way of blaming the wicket for this one. That's just chipped straight down his throat. It was a nothing shot. He's going to have nothing to do for a while because he's going to be sitting in the dressing room. A very disappointed man with company. Everyone dislikes that company, especially cricketers. The duck helps him off. Five for one, three, three in the 35th. This is McCook, 34 years of age, and made his debut on Friday night. Uh, so that's quite interesting. 
is uh, a pretty late starter i think that's a he also bowls off spinners and no doubt uh, we'll see those a little later on so he's out there to face the music now stephen mccook he's going to have to fo face holdsworth too he's looking pretty good at the moment two for 25. Yes, uh, Holdsworth really whipping into the action here. He's uh, got two wickets in quick succession. The first one was Phillips. Captain trying to run that one down to third man. Bill Emery taking a real solid catch there. And Richard Herman, it wasn't an overly solid catch. It definitely wasn't a solid shot. It's straight down his throat. Second delivery faced, out. Duck. What a good over that was. A double wicket made. Victoria, five for 133. These off spinners. Ooh, he should have got hold of that one. Tried to play the sweep shot there, Harris. He's played it well on a couple of occasions. He's got 15 off 34 balls. This one down the leg side, and you can see he spotted it straight away, but just missed it. this match uh, there's a Sheffield Shield match taking place in Hobart and that's the score on day four Queensland five for 175 Mar 72 not out it's got in the air and how far is away from the sign not that far well just hitting the fence there <laughs> and I think as it left the bat everyone would have been saying is this the big moment is this the one hundred and forty thousand dollars a little flat out of the height, I reckon. Just one more fighter, Brett, could have done it. This has just failed by about 15 metres. It's good to see David Harris playing positively, even though wickets are falling around him. A well-timed shot, the field being up. Wickets have been falling. He's taking the opportunity of a boundary. Getting back to the shield match there. Five for 175. Tasmania made 248. Taz looked good figures. That's uh, Dirk Tazler's first match back, so he'd be very happy with those figures. And uh, Tasmania will be waiting for that declaration now. Cook is going to front up to the off spinner. He shouldn't have too many problems with uh, off spin because he bowls off spin himself. He's a smiler, and uh, that was a nice straight push down the ground, so he's off the mark. Six off the over, it's five for 139. 39, 36 overs have been bowled in this 50 over match. Herman out for a duck. Cook is out there now, replacing him. straight to mid on so new south wales doing very well in all the competitions in this mercantile mutual competition there they are top at the moment with a magnificent net run rate and will definitely be involved in the finals and uh, in terms of the sheffield shield there it is right up there again uh, top eight points south australia and western australia are the same but uh, direction they've all played eight but uh, the points on the right hand side there 25.8 They lost uh, 0.2 because of the slow over rate. Hence, uh, slightly different looking points on the right hand side there. South Australia 20. Uh, what a time, Simon, New South Wales are having this year. A very powerful combination. Even when their international players are away, Tony, they seem to have fantastic backup. And it's full credit to the New South Wales Cricket Association for being able to produce such good players as you go right down because they have a lot of players on international duty yet they can still perform very very well at shield level and also in these domestic one days so what's happening with victoria then they're uh, down the bottom of that shield table and i think they might have been pretty long way down that uh, mercantile mutual tape as well
Oh, that's a difficult question, Tony. I don't think I can answer it, to be brutally honest. Not at this stage, but I'll endeavour to find out, and I'll come back to you on that one. Victoria certainly struggling this year. And, uh, they're beginning to struggle in this match as well. Five for 140. Good decision not to go for the second there. Panther can cause a fair bit of trouble out there. Michael Bevan very quick to get to the ball. Moves across the outfield very, very well. Watching come into picture here. Doesn't do much wrong there. I'd like the throw probably to be up a little bit more. Closer to the pegs, but he cut down any chance of another run by getting to the ball quickly. He's just seeing Bevan running into the picture there. It's uh, almost... It's almost strange, isn't it, that he hasn't represented Australia at one day cricket. Magnificent stroke maker. But then again, so much talent around. Perhaps he'll still get his turn. I agree with you there, Tony. I think he'll definitely get his turn. It's a matter of waiting in line a little at the moment because there is an enormous amount of talent around the country. Good over from Holdsworth, two runs from it, it's five for 141. Five for 141. Looks as if McNamara now is going to continue. He's going to be bowling from the member's end. And in the commentary box, Richie Benno and Jeff Lawson. Next Tony, afternoon everyone. Brad McNamara did well early on. Old, uh, as usual, good line and length. A little bit of extra zip off the pitch. He's on now at five for 141, and he bowled four overs for 11 and took the one wicket. Afternoon, Geoffrey Lawson. Good afternoon, Richie Benno. There are the numbers. Brad McNamara for a useful medium pacer. Probably being brought back because Phil Alley the two very indifferent overs. And McNamara starts with the slower ball. Something you don't often see a bowler coming on for his new spell. versatile cricketer Brad McNamara two batsmen at the moment Harris and uh, McCook uh, short on experience for Victoria McCook an all-rounder Harris has made 22 so far 41 balls Cook has uh, two from seven that's become a little bit of a struggle for the Victorians started off uh, blazing away with Phillips and Harvey, the opening batsman. New style opening pair. Elliot went down to number three. And there's Hodge and Herman. Well, Cook making his debut on Friday night against Western Australia. That was interesting times for him. And McNamara started with a slow ball. And that one, two or three yards quicker and really beating McCook for pace more than anything. Some movement off the pitch. Ball came back inside the bat. That delivery had a lot more pace on it. And that's one of the features of Brad McNamara's bowling. Brad McNamara stands about five foot seven. He's very deceptive. He's got a good slow ball. He's a very aggressive bowler. But when he does crank the pace up, and slip in that faster ball, it does surprise a lot of batsmen. He's got a very good bouncer. Not that we'll see many bounces in this one day game, but his change of pace is dramatic. Saw him beating McCook there, that first ball he bowls at McCook. There were high hopes at uh, one stage that um, Victorians would get up to something around about 240, but that's not going to work out now. Into the 38th over. It's 5 for 142. Also high hopes for Brad McNamara a few years ago that he's going to develop into limited overs player on the lines of Steve Waugh. That's uh, some sort of variety of Steve Waugh with his bowling. 
but his batting simply hasn't come on in the same way and that's a pretty big ask anyway because Steve War is a terrific player but McNamara looked a very very good player and still is an excellent Sheffield Shield player for New South Wales it's the way New South Wales have uh, held Victoria so far some big overs there ranging through from uh, six to nine Sharp fielding, 5 for 143. 338 overs gone now here at the MCG. This is uh, Victoria against New South Wales. Mercantile Mutual Cup fixture. Wayne Phillips out for 46. Ian Harvey for 35. This is Wayne Holdsworth. That's a fine shot. The sort of thing the Victorians need to do. They also need to make certain they bat out their full 50 overs. Still 11 to go and five wickets in hand. A very safe stroke this, straight down the ground, a good swing of the bat through the line. He hasn't tried to hoik it across the line, and no man out. And Roddy Davidson chasing there, never quite going to catch up with it. Very good solid blow. Sometimes that produces a change in the field. Holsworth has the mid-off out on the fence. And Phil Emery's happy to go that way. He's got to keep those four men inside the circle. Just the one man right there, deep, long off. Holsworth responds with better length that time. And Cook unable to go down the ground. There, there is our man out on the fence. Right in the bottom left of your screen there. Even though McCook has shown the ability to hit on the leg side, Phil Emery's content to leave the man at mid-off, and that's the gamble you take as a captain. Which one will I leave out? If he takes both back, he has a long on and a long off, he probably has to bring fine leg up inside the circle, and that is a big risk. Because if you bring fine leg up in the circle, that type of thing can happen. Bill Alley did the fielding down at fine leg and saved what looked to be a certain boundary. May have disappointed with two overs. But certainly no lack of effort in that from Bill Alley. As Wayne Holsworth did slip into leg stump. It's good effort from a big man, six foot ten. Just held them to two. Good piece of fielding for the big man there. inside the circle three of those on the offside so Phil Emery wants Wayne Holsworth the bowl off stop and outside more protection on that side of the wicket and obviously just a little bit of bat in that one no signal from the umpire. I thought it may have been a leg by, just the way the batsman played it. But obviously a little tickle on it. Wayne Holsworth looked like he was set to make an appeal and didn't go on with it, so perhaps uh, there was a big piece of the bat in it. Eight from that over. 51, 39 overs gone. Change of uh, garb for the batsman. Decided to uh, dispense with the helmet and just go for the ordinary cap. It's quite warm down here, around about 27, 28 degrees at the MCG. Harris is the man taking strike, and McNamara is the bowler. Ah! And it's out anyway, the wrong man. The biggest shout for LBW. McCook sets off, sent back by Harris, and a very casual run out by Bracknamara in the finish. 
plenty of things to keep the umpire occupied out there. And I think Phil Emery just asked him why the LBW wasn't out. I think it's because it pitches outside leg stump. And it's hitting middle halfway up. But pitching outside leg stump, and McCook runs the complete length of the pitch. And Brad McNamara untroubled to pull in that throw. So a wicket does fall that, that delivery, but it's the non-striker, Steve McCook, run out. The seven, Victoria now six for 151 in the 40th over. Harris the bowler after that run out. McCook, Steve McCook, the man dismissed. And Victorians now have a real problem to get through their full 50 overs. They've been making a habit of uh, being dismissed before their 50 overs. Damien Fleming's the new batsman. He's the non-striker at the moment. But we are now into the 40th over. Damien Fleming comes on strike. He's out there for this reason. A big shout for LBW. Probably pitching outside leg summer. Cook's away. And I don't know who called that. And certainly there was a very late call of no. Shane Lee picks up and lobs it. McNamara, not a particularly good throw. Didn't have to be. And McNamara does an easy job of removing the bales. And umpire Daryl Holt has an easy decision to make after a difficult one. McNamara now in his sixth over. He is one for 14. It's a pity he can't claim that run out. He'd like to have that on his figures. There are his numbers. Keeps the run rate down well. Bowling very straight. Just getting a bit of movement there. Ask the question politely. Has some support from behind the wicket. Just getting the ball to tail in. Let's have a look at this movement just into the batsman. The umpire. Just to answer the question whether it's struck him outside the line. That's the huge shout from McNamara. We were talking earlier about what a competitor he is, what a handy cricketer he is to have in a side like this. It's a slow ball. We've seen the full repertoire there. Slow ball, quicker ball, bit of movement in the air. Good over from Braden McNamara. Victoria, six for 152. To get off the mark here at the MCG. Victoria against New South Wales. Six for 152, Victoria. And 40 overs gone. Just underlining that uh, Victorians will be extremely unhappy if once again they fail to get through to their full 50 overs permitted. Shane Lee, six overs now made and two for 17. The Australian team touring South Africa is playing its first four day match at the moment. It's a game against Northern Transvaal at Centurion Park. Five for 274. Dean Jones, 72 not out. Ian Healy, one not out, are in at the moment. Michael Slater out for 51. David Boone, 48. And Matthew Hayden for 50. Rain has stopped play over there in South Africa. I think that was all by 4.30 on the first day as well, so Australia getting on with it. Victoria attempting to get on with it, but there's a man out there. As Harris charges the bowler on that occasion. They're obviously feeling some urgency out there. And as Richie said, they've got to be very careful they don't fall short and not bat these overs out. The last couple of games they've played, that's exactly what Victoria have done. They've got away to a good start here today. And they haven't backed it up. Six for 153. We've got nine overs left after this one be very careful they must bat these overs out it's a key period of the game right now very fine back cut it mostly came off uh, the bat rather than the edge but a useful player Damien Fleming right down the order we just gave you the scores in that Australia Northern Transvaal match, 5 for 274. And a reminder that uh, next Saturday evening, there'll be the first of the limited overs internationals, South Africa against Australia. That'll be from the Wanderers Club in Johannesburg. Just check your local guides for times for that match. It's the first of eight limited overs internationals. There are four day matches. 
and in uh, the latter part of the tour there'll be four day night matches and in between there'll be three tests so there's plenty of cricket there eight limited overs games that's the first of them South Africa against Australia it'll be next Saturday evening in uh, the eastern states club in Johannesburg in South Africa some very very good games between Australia and South Africa out here and the South African side uh, skippered by Kepler Vessels and then Hansi Cronier were here slower ball well picked just the two runs yes that uh, tour by Alan Border's team of South Africa has been rain marred so far once again rain a stop play in this current game against Northern Transvaal Six for 157 here. Harris has made 25. A single to Fleming. Takes it on to six for 158. Victoria won the toss and batted here in this Mercantile Mutual Cup game. Cook, the last man out, run out for seven. 25 to David Harris. Damien Fleming is on five. Six for 158 and we're into the 42nd over. And that's not Brad McNamara starting another spell. I'd say the wicketkeeper's moved his bowling mark and forgot to put it back. He's had to remark it. Great stop by Phil Emery. That had four runs written all over it. Not a great piece of bowling from Brad McNamara. It's the full toss swinging down the leg side. A bit of a curl in the air, just down the leg side. And Phil Emery saves a suet in boundary. Yep. That'll be four. No chance for Emery there. Very thick inside edge. And it's just raced away down to deep pine lake. In addition to uh, the cricket we're talking. Start this evening from uh, Lillehammer in Norway. They commence tonight at 8.30 p.m. Just check your local guides for times there. That will be a wonderful sight, the start of the Winter Olympics. And uh, Ken Sutcliffe and Liz Hayes are over there for the Nine Network. And this will be the opening ceremony. Quite spectacular. Ken Sutcliffe and Liz Hayes heading a terrific team over there in uh, Lillehammer. And it'll be spectacular stuff. It's tonight at 8.30, right round Australia. Certainly no signs of winter here at the MCG. Lovely day. Sun beating down here in Melbourne. And the spectators all doing the right thing there. Well, four out of five with their hats on, all got their sunglasses on, I dare say their sunscreen. It's a lovely day. Will it continue? That's out. And it continues to be a lovely day for Bad McNamara. As Damien Fleming goes, there's been a lot of shouts for LBW. This time, Daryl Holt doesn't have to decide whether it's pitched outside leg stump. It hits him in line, it's moving in towards the stumps. Did a long look from the umpire, makes sure that it's certain of hitting the stumps. And now Damien Fleming departs. Victoria lose their seventh wicket there, 162 in the 42nd over. Here's the new batsman. Damien Fleming came in ahead of him here today at the MCG. There is quite a useful player, but hasn't really been among the runs so far this summer. Seven for 162, four runs off the over, one wicket fell. McNamara has done a terrific job again for New South Wales. 
This is how Damien Fleming departed. Very low, hits him just above the, the ankle. And although he was on the front foot, not a long way in front of the crease, and I would think that was a major consideration for the umpire, just how far forward the Damien Fleming did get. Just half forward, not a long way forward, and certainly not going over the top. And I don't think Damien Fleming would have too many things to complain about there. That's another LBW, two so far. There's been a lot of shouts as well, and that indicates that there's not a lot of bounce in this wicket, even when the batsman does get on the front foot. The bounce hasn't been high, it's not hitting them above the knee roll. If they can do that, that puts a lot of doubt in the umpire's mind. And Brett McNamara are also not a tall man, so he's not going to get a lot of bounce. On the other hand, Neil Maxwell now comes on from the great southern stand-in. Well, six overs for 20, just a little bit too much width from Neil Maxwell in his first spell. Let's see if he can get it straight at this time. And the width again. It escapes. Always tough when you come on for that second spell. Not too sure where the ball's going to go, how your run-up is. Well, Maxwell wouldn't be too stiff because it's nice and sunny and bright out there. And a repeat of the first ball, only a little closer to the bat this time. It's almost like giving catching practice. Seven for 162 here after Victoria won the toss. There's nothing wrong with the pitch. There's um, just a little bit of movement off the seam. Basically, good batting track. And the wicket um, where I reckon Victoria really slipped back was when Brad Hodge, this very good young player, was to a brilliant catch by Wayne Holdsworth. Shane Lee was the bowler. Holdsworth made oh, a good 20, 25 metres around to his left and took a wonderful catch there. Two hands, kept his eyes on the ball all the time. That was a good performance from the New South Wales fast bowler. And that immediately posed problems for Victoria and they've slumped now to be seven for 162. A single air takes it to 163. We're into the 43rd over. Three point eight two is the run rate. They were up over four at one stage, then they slipped back to three point nine five. They were around about that for four or five overs. And now New South Wales have put the clamps on and they're back to three point eight two. Phillips and Harvey opened the innings for Victoria. Phillips made forty-six and Harvey thirty-five. That was a good opening stand. They put on 58 from 87 balls. And there have been other partnerships that have been worthwhile. There's 21 between Phillips and Elliott. Phillips and Hodge put on 24. And Phillips and Harris put on 30. They haven't been able to get away from the New South Wales bowlers. And the fielding has been quite brilliant at times. Good picking up there for the skipper and for the bowlers. Seven for 163 from 42.4 overs at the moment. of the run rate been some very good overs for Victoria but also some that have flattened the scoring rate out it's yes, particularly that double wicket over when Wayne Holsworth was brought back from the southern end Wayne Phillips had been the anchor of the innings he nicked one through for Phil Emery to take a good catch that and the Hodge dismissal have been keys a single wasted there and uh, Victoria stay at 7 for 164 after 43. 7 for 164 after 43 overs McNamara continues from the members end to Darren Barry. New South Wales buying a very good line in length frustrating the Victorian batsmen into some silly mistakes here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Once again a disappointing scorecard for Victoria after winning the toss conditions are perfect in the 44th over, 7 for 164. 
being very hot now. Must be pretty close to 30 degrees. And good afternoon, Simon O'Donnell. Good afternoon, Bill. I don't know how good it is, to be brutally honest. If you're a Victorian supporter, things aren't going as well as we would have liked. This gentleman here, Brad McNamara, has had a lot to do with it. He's tailing the ball in late here at the moment. The right-handed batsman, they're having a fair bit of trouble. What about Damien Fleming's dismissal? Not a lot of bounce from Brad McNamara. you really got to keep your eye on him. Yes, he's a very handy cricketer, underrated cricketer, Brad McNamara. was a star in the Mercantile Mutual final last year where New South Wales beat Victoria. Very handy bowler. Took three for 27 in the final with his in and out swingers. He's a strong athlete. And uh, one of the reasons why New South Wales is always competitive in this competition. years of age he's only played 12 mercantile mutual matches economy rates excellent 58 14 wickets an average of 21 on figures that's got to be very close if he doesn't get some bet on that leg by there's that tailing i was talking about that ball tailed too much was missing leg stump and barry didn't cope with it all that well very lucky that Told as much as it did. He might have lost the castle or a judged LBW. Going around the wicket now, McNamara to the left handed Harris. Economy rate's excellent. Average is great, 21.28. A very handy cricketer. When the War Brothers uh, go on tour or go overseas, Brad McNamara, Brad McNamara always does a great job with the ball. Well bowled. Three off the over, seven for one, six, seven. Six overs to be bowled to Victoria. Victoria versus New South Wales at the MCG. Big shout, that's close too. It's all happening here as far as decisions are concerned. Steve Walpole, the umpire, Neil Maxwell, the bowler. This one not far away. The angle is probably the thing that did it. Neil Maxwell delivered that ball very wide of the crease. Be the main reason why umpire Walpole knocked it back. Very hard to straighten that up enough to stay and hit the stumps. It's a good decision. The replay did show the angle there, and you can see off stump as well. You know, Maxwell does bowl quite wide of the stumps. Bill Emery, the New South Wales captain, always relaxed guy, but uh, takes his time with the field placings. Man now coming up inside the circle at point. got away to a fairly good start they were two for 99 at one stage the halfway mark but then they lost wickets they sort of get a partnership going and then they lose a wicket and they lost two in the one over and really it's after a good start it's a disappointing scorecard that Probably putting that on ball. He's well forward there. That won't get it the LB. Maxwell throwing his head back, but he was well forward at the popping crease. Have another look at that one, though. Neil Maxwell's not happy. Not too far away. Again, the angle might have done him, and that's probably why the umpire is not giving the affirmative decision towards Neil Maxwell. Very economical this morning. 21 runs off 7.3 overs thus far. Brad McNamara and, and Lee are the ones that caused all the damage. Apart from Phil Alley, who lost his way in one over, they've really been uh, very tight in New South Wales. And Lee chipping in with wickets at the right time. And Maxwell aggressive. Holdsworth, 10 overs, 2 for 32. He did the job. 
Robertson, uh, who bowled at the tough time, 10 overs, no wicket for 40, wasn't disgraced either. I thought Gavin Robinson was very impressive. He's really an improved cricketer. He had some time down in Tasmania and played a lot of shield matches and domestic matches there, and he's really come on and on, Gavin Robinson. David Harris uh, feels like he's going to get left here. He's, he's sort of steadied the middle order without uh, carving up a lot of boundaries, but he's looked very positive. He's tried to play shots. It's very difficult when you're losing partners all the time, to, particularly in your second match. It's not easy, especially when those wickets have been falling around him, but he's held his head very well. It's been an excellent second up effort from David Harris. He's tried a few things like that. He's pulled that away. Makes up two more. That's the over bowled. Seven for 170. But over seven for 170, Victoria. Any score around about 190 is a good score at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. That's been the case in recent years. Very hammers that down to mid on for single. Although this pitch looks to be quite true today and, and good even bounce. It'll be interesting to see how the New South Welshman handle it, the bat. And a couple of times where you would think the ball has held up a little bit, haven't been out, the batsman haven't been able to hit through the line. That's very similar to the Sydney Cricket Ground wicket and just could suit the New South Wales batsman down to the ground. That's good running. The final qualifying round of the Mercantile Mutual Cup is next Sunday at the Sydney Cricket Ground. That's a very important one. New South Wales versus South Australia. If South Australia win and win well, they will go into the finals. New South Wales um, certainties, but uh, Western Australia, Queensland and South Australia with a match in hand there with a very good net run rate of 0.42 and with a real chance if they can knock off New South Wales at home next Sunday. him over trying to hit down the ground Darren Berry went nowhere near that maybe a little bit of in swing there he's bowled for three and it's eight for 172 this can happen in the late overs Darren Berry was absolutely nowhere near it old neck and crop Brad McNamara getting that to tail in again we'll learn our lesson one day eight for 172 it comes to the crease, he's 28 years of age, high score 13, career average of 8.66. Victoria struggling, 8 for 172. And the 46th over. And the swinger again, he's uh, working the ball nicely, um, McNamara, genuine swinger of the ball. Well, knocked the castle over. Never looked like he was going to miss at any stage. Only person that looked like he was going to miss there was Darren Berry, and he did. One thing you've got to do in this game is take note of what's happening out there and what he's doing. Brad McNamara created that opportunity with some good in-swing. Yes, he's a handy cricketer. He's picked up three wickets now. He's always uh, saw by his average, just considering 21 runs per wicket in this competition. Economy rate is excellent. And he just bowls stump to stump. It's intelligent stuff. He doesn't bowl too short. He's always full. If he, he's on the wrong side of... Uh, he's always on the fully side, both field. Always has his mid-off and mid-on fairly straight. That's an excellent performance. 8.5 overs. 3 for 22 on this pitch. Goes for York and doesn't get it through. Two runs in the wicket. 8.172. Six overs. Victoria versus New South Wales at the MCG. A defendable title on this ground, but not, certainly not a great one when you're two for 99 at the halfway stage. New South Wales doing a great job with the ball. And through for single, Sutherland slow off the box. That's Harris, who's safely home. Excitement here at the MCG, but next Saturday night, it's going to be a big night for cricket fans 
viewing through wide world of sports across Australia. South Africa versus Australia next Saturday evening and the Wanderers. What a wonderful ground. Been thrashed there twice. I can remember that vividly, but still a great cricket ground. And it's South Africa versus Australia. The first one day international. What should be a great tour. All the games covered by wide world of sports. So next Saturday, the first one, South Africa versus Australia. Eight one-day games and three test matches. Eight-week tour of South Africa. And it'll be packed out. The one-day game at the Wanderers. A good cricket ground, normally a good pitch in a fast outfield. So next Saturday night, South Africa versus Australia. The first time since 1969-70. The Australian side has played against South Africa on South African soil. Meanwhile, it's Harris. Chips it up, gets it through for a single. Oh, this is good running. James Sutherland responded well. That's excellent cricket. The big praying man has got the grin on his face because we never knew he could move that quick. He's got up and back. Very, very well here. This ball just punched. Mr. Mara made a vain attempt to get to it. Because that pace wasn't there, it didn't get to the mid-off as quick as they wanted. Now the bat's going to get two. Oh, it's wide. It's caught, no ball caught at square leg. Neil Maxwell, <laughs> he's a very competitive person. <laughs> oh, I really love this. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know what Maxie wanted it called. It had to be a wide or no ball. We're going to see that it was going to be a no ball. And... Maxie still believed it shouldn't have been. I look forward to a bit of question and answer time after this, Max. Just see what he thought that should have been. He does give 120% now, Maxwell. That's slogged him mid-on, doesn't beat the fields. But miss field, they don't get a run. Umpire, Daryl Holt at square leg. And it had the best view in the house. It, when you looked at replay, it was a maybe a line ball decision. I thought it was higher than that. I think that was a fair call. It's in the air. The field's been coming from everywhere. He's under it. Chiqui. Yes. That's the end of Harris. Doing the right thing in the end. Out for 33. Two boundaries off 63 balls faced. Couldn't quite time the lofted shot over mid-wicket. He got locked into a corner, David Harris. Victoria losing wickets around him. He had to do something about it, try and keep that run rate up. You can't blame him for that. You can blame a number of others. Unfortunate, good catch in the end from Richard Cheekwe. Well judged. David Harris will depart. New South Wales will grow even further in confidence. He leaves us for 33. Victoria, 9 for 177. who hasn't troubled the scorers as far as runs is concerned in this competition betting for the second time he joins James Sutherland who's on strike to Maxwell it's the last ball of the over wicket for Neil Maxwell the valuable wicket that New South Wales wanted as well David Harris was basically the only real danger left for New South Wales he had to try and move the run rate along he's tried to loft that Basically, over mid on, slow wicket it has made him pull it around to mid wicket. And a very well judged catch there from Richard Cheekwee. He knew he was in danger as soon as he hit it. Yes, you see the eyes going to the heavens, you know, you're in trouble. And Cheekwee caught it reasonably well. He's a very good slip fieldsman, Richard Cheekwee. Uh, Victoria struggling to get towards 209 for 177. A very good defensive effort by New South Wales in the last 20 overs. And they've been very tidy in line and length. They've fielded brilliantly and uh, never lost control of this match after a solid start by Victoria from Harvey and Phillips. 
rest of the batting apart from Harris has been very, very disappointing. It's taking nothing away from McNamara, Holdsworth, Maxwell or Lee. They've all picked up wickets at the right time. McNamara from the members in around the wicket to his left-hander. Yep. Uh, it's got to be out of heads. Would have been out by about three metres, but he's off the mark. Cookie's now troubled the scorers. I'm sure he would have liked to have troubled the scorers in a more orthodox fashion. Should have been run out by half the wicket. But cool and calm. Simon Cook, he just sort of takes it in his stride. You don't hit the pegs, I'll make a run. He can now have an average. I don't really think that average will be ever overly impressive, but just might be handy. Sutherland, the man who'll have to try and bat out the 50 overs now for Victoria. Nine for 178. 48th over. Still moving the ball. McNamara, that was a fraction wide. You can see the angle in. Always of good length. He's hit the batsman on the pads on numerous occasions today. There's been a lot of shouts for LBW. He picked up Harvey LBW and Fleming. And a lot of shouts. Bowled very well. Ah! Won't get that around the wicket. That one, he's got to do miracles. He's got to really pitch and straighten up almost square from that angle. No chance of that being, well, that decision going in the affirmative to Brad McNamara. He's done an excellent job today. Real good all-round career. Would have played a lot more cricket bar for the War Twins. Yes, he's a permanent member of the side at the moment and a valuable one in all types of cricket. He's a handy batsman, a good fieldsman, and a very good change bowler. And he's an aggressive bowler, a swing bowler. He's always at you. He's got a cricket delivery. 9.4 overs, 3 for 24. This is his final over. They are super figures. The economy rate of 41.4. Excellent. over from Brad McNamara. A good 10 overs from him. Victoria, Sutherland to Cook 2. And your match will continue from the southern end. It's a nice little nick down the third man. Phil Alley, the fieldsman. I pick up two. Good man about to 190. It's a reasonable target on this ground. Wicket has a little bit of a change in pace in it. Starts to wear during the afternoon. That run rate of 3.77 won't be easy to achieve. Williams can bowl straight, change their pace a little bit. It will throw the onus back on the New South Wales batsman. Chips up nicely into the square leg region. Oh, there's another run out, surely. Dear, oh dear, they've got no idea. It's got to run 20 metres, chaps. It's all over. A silly run out. Really, it was always going to be dangerous at either end, and you really think that Victorians are playing like me and airs if you're sitting up here in the commentary box. Run out scores, hitting the ball in the air with overs to be bowled, but full points to New South Wales, they don't let the opportunity slip by. Definitely an easy one. And this isn't a very impressive two. James Sutherland wasn't even interested. Suddenly Simon Cook started coming, he hardly even got into pitcher. Very easy decision for Daryl Holt there. So we put one out for five. It's a disappointing end to probably what was a disappointing scorecard because Victoria started very well. But they lost their way from about the 26 over stage and they were bowled out for 183. So 10 wickets have fallen for 183. But full points in New South Wales. In this current form, they should uh, find it a difficult but uh, reasonable chase. 184 the target. We'll have a short break. Be back with Richie Venner. 6-8, and uh, it should, in theory, be uh, relatively easy for New South Wales. They have a strong batting side, but as we know, theory is not much use in a cricket match. First ball coming up now in just a moment or two, and to take you through the first session of play, here's Phil Laurie, and with him is Tony Gray. Thank you, Richie, and Damien Fleming in your picture there. He's about to bowl to Richard Chiqui. 
out there with Chiqui is Davison. So Richard Chiqui there, high score of 66 against Western Australia. Big, strong guy. And uh, down at the non-strikers end, Rodney Davison. This is Fleming. And slip down the leg side straight away. If he does that again, it'll be punished, I would suggest. The umpires, I think, quite sensibly now and again. If uh, the first delivery is just marginal, they let the bowler get away with it. But from then on in, they're very strict. I reckon that should also apply to that front line, especially if the bowler runs up and he's a centimetre over the line. It really is of no consequence, whatever. Just a little word in the bowler's ear. And if he persists with uh, placing his front foot up or over the line, then you can go for it from there. Well, that's a leg by. So uh, the New South Wales score is off the mark. They need 184 runs, and they need to score those runs at 3.68 runs per over. They're going to win. And they'd have to be favoured, Bill. Yes, they are favourites, and they deserve to be. They bowled uh, Victoria out for 183. And just watching Damien Fleming bowl those first two balls, he's straining for the extra yard of pace. He needs to do a McNamara and get right on line, and maybe the ball will do something early on. He's bowling now to Rodney Davis on the left-hander. Conditions are perfect. It's a good pitch. Um, maybe just a little bit slow, but certainly there hasn't been a lot of movement off the seam. In New South Wales batsmen who play on a pitch much like this at home. And the ball's not uh, coming off too quickly or just well. And try and get to the pitch of the ball before they drive. It does look hard and dry. Old Flemmer is the call there. That one just straightening down the line. Rod Davison, left-hander. Just watch this one just straightens a little bit. And uh, it bounced a little bit too. So the ball nipping off the seam back in towards the left-hander. Yes, well, Damon Fleming uh, is sharp and he can swing the ball both ways. He needs to do that and Victoria need early wickets. Two slips and a gully in. It's just looking at the field for the left-hander over on the offside. There's uh, a first slip in position and a second slip. I'll start again with that. First slip there, second slip just moving into position now. The gully there as well. Anything that's nicked fine will go straight to the wicketkeeper. I hope you're in better form from South Africa next weekend with a telestrator. I'm not too sure that they have telestrators in Africa, but <laughs> it won't be long before we'll find out. It's just one off the other, no wicket for one. A while before we see any great difference there. And this is a surprise, Ian Harvey. Having opened the batting is now being asked to open the bowling. Just three wickets against uh, Western Australia here on Friday, bowling out swingers and a run out as well. Run out Tom Moody off his own bowling was a magical bit of work. Good reflexes. He'll bowl outswingers to the right-handed batsman. And so those little outswingers, the ball moving away towards slip. Just went a little bit. His field, certainly the offside field, quite a strong one. He's got uh, a slip in there. He's got a gully quite square. This man is there for the mishit. Anything that's mishit in that direction. There's a, a square man at point there in the mid-off. It's uh, the mid-off here for anything that's hit down the ground, but uh, he's got a bit of a gap just left to his left hand. There's also a man down in the distance down there covering that boundary. One down the leg side. Now, the onside is a little vacant, so if he bowls straight, he's got a chance of getting it through there. You can see the mid-on and the mid-wicket. So a gap in there and also a gap straight down the ground as well. And uh, that area is covered as well. Well, the umpire here, Steve Walpole, been consistent because I thought in the first innings there was one or two balls that were very close to wide early on. And that was very close to one day wide, but not called. As long as they're consistent, that's fair enough.
Tip your shield update. Hobart day four, the final day. Queensland have declared at nine for 208. The target's 300 and Tasmania, no wicket for 24. And that would be a big uh, result for Tasmania if they can get up there. Hobart. See over bold, it's no wicket for one. Wilson and Cheekwe. Out there, just one leg by so far for New South Wales. Cautious start. This is Damien Fleming. Very optimistic. Not often that umpires consider the pad back. LBWs, even if it did hit the pad first. Just hold his line. It's it swinging back there. He's forward. And well worth a shout from the bowler, but very difficult for the umpire to give how far it's going to swing. Would have hit the stumps, would have gone over the top. And a good decision from umpire Darrell Holt on that occasion. Victoria bowled well in the first ten overs, and with that uh, required run rate over five, they could get themselves back in the match. So they could put a little bit of pressure on the top order by bowling nice and straight don't drop the ball too short Fleming fine one day bowler at 3.83 get that over five on a mobile cricket ground and pick up a wicket or two it'll be a good match oh, now let's go back to Hobart day four the final day of a very important Sheffield Shield match Queensland took the first innings points, that's two points. Now they're looking for an outright result, and with two sessions to go, Tasmania require 300 to win the match. And it's a very tight Sheffield Shield competition, apart from New South Wales. Anybody could play in the final against them. I would assume that New South Wales will make the final. But a good competition. Yes, that must be a bit disappointing for you, Bill. Just uh, seeing those Victorians sitting right down there at the bottom. Hang on, hang on, have a look at the games played. It's three games to go. Three sixes are 18. 18 and 14, we're in there. Okay, well, I'll give you a call from South Africa just to uh, find out how things are going. But I mean, no, so far though, on both uh, the Sheffield Shield table and the Mercantile Mutual table at the moment, um, Victoria, you've got to say they've been just a little bit disappointing. Well, they've had one or two close. Yeah, you'd have to say they've been disappointing, but they've been very close. Mercantile Mutual has been very disappointing. That's a good shot. He's off the mark. Educated, top edge over the slip to four. So Davison away. Let's just watch this shot. And uh, he does get underneath that, and uh, he does nudge that over the top. Just watch him there. You can see him just nudging it over the top and down towards third man. Just looking at the Mercantile Mutual table, Victoria's uh, woes started, I guess, in Hobart last weekend. And they uh, went down to Tasmania, who had not won a game in four games, and it really, the rush started and it set in properly against Western Australia on Friday night. But this game's not over here. It's nowhere for five. So there it is, no wicket for five. They've bowled pretty well so far. Chiqui yet to score. Normally a very aggressive player, Chiqui, and loves to hit the ball straight as well. Yes, there's an interesting battle here between Harvey, who's just medium pace, but does bowl a pretty good outswinger if he gets his length right. If the batsman prepared to drive, there's always a chance of an edge. It's well fielded. And Chiqui getting just a little bit uh, edgy out there. He's been out there for 12 balls now, 11 balls. And uh, still hasn't managed to penetrate the field. This is an example. It's really flayed that one square. But uh, the field is well placed. Well, that's a good shot. And you, the ball was short and very wide, and it's going to run down towards that third man boundary. Will they get three here? No, they'll settle for two. That's not very clever running, actually. And Fleming with a good throw. That ball indicated the problems for Victoria. Harvey's bowled well by keeping the ball up and getting it to swing. He drops one halfway, and that takes the pressure off Richard Chiqui, who punched it nicely back with a point. But it was a long hop. Hit it beautifully. Into the gap on the onside that time, so another two to Chiqui. So he's beginning to move now. 
and as a result of that the scoreboard will start ticking over for New South Wales this is a strong player Anything's things up there he'll smash it back at the bowler so Richard Cheek we opening with Rod Davison and the very exciting Michael Bevan is due in next it's always exciting when one sees him start with the wicket Again, wrong single there. So the running and the understanding between t these two not there. No wicket for nine. Winter Olympics and a picture there of Nancy Kerrigan. She's the US figure skater. And uh, it's on tonight. The uh, opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics coming to you from Lillehammer in Norway. Commencing at 8.30. In Sutcliffe and Lid Hayes are up there. And uh, no that doubt they'll be getting ready to provide us all down here with a magnificent coverage of uh, the Winter Olympics. That's uh, 8 30 p.m. Eastern Time. Dan Fleming uh, bowling quite well here. Keeps the ball up. He's a, a very good seam bowler and can swing the ball both ways. Nice, tiny, tidy figures. He's played his one-day internationals this year for Australia in the one-day games. Not, only about 23 years of age, Damien Fleming, and uh, good, honest bowler. Very warm afternoon, and good afternoon for a run chase. Uh, the outfield will quicken up. There's a lot of dew early on. It was foggy in Melbourne this morning. But uh, a good day for both teams. Conditions fair. And the wicket uh, quite hard and true. It's his spot on target at the moment, Fleming. Heard the West Indies with the Australian youth team back in the 1990 season he's a full-time cricketer those are his uh, mercantile mutual figures three four twenty five his best figures back in the season of 92 93 this season no wicket for 12 two for 49 in hobart no wicket for 31 here at the mcg against western australia it's well fielded Brilliantly fielded by Brad Hodge at backward square leg. Disappointed with the bat today, Brad Hodge, but this is a magnificent defensive save. Good young athlete. ball there from for me Rodney Davison was a fine young batsman as well so a lot of youth coming through the system in the mercantile mutual cup matches Davison uh, good field looks a good solid batsman the other in Richard Creek who is more a dasher and a good combination a left and right handed combination in the top order for New South Wales that one down the leg side but he got away with it no wicket for 10. the wicket Chiqui on strike in the air and between the keeper and slip well i think that was probably the keeper's catch he really had to go for it seemed to be caught in two minds there slip went i don't think it would have carried to him fleming's in that position no it's not it's uh elliot at first slip just let's have a look at that again it's a difficult one, but I guess if it's going to be anybody's catch, and it probably was neither, but really the wicketkeeper is a boat that maybe had to have a go at that. The slip fieldsman driving away to his left. Yes, Darren, Darren Berry started to go. He got his right hand moving there and uh, then bailed out. I probably should have gone all the way. Quite a big nick, and you can see that he was almost there. Slip had come back a long way. Nick Slip's going to stand wide. There's a little unriddled written rule that said everyone's got to dive. 
yes, that's the type of catch that Victoria have to take when you're defending 183. It was a good delivery from Harvey. Got the edge. Ties the drive. Mr. Chiqui, a bit of a dasher. Early days for this young man. He's only 23. This is his fourth game. Average of 75 and a strike rate of 67.6. So that's a good start. Two not outs. Scored 150 runs in the Mercantile Mutual competition. So he smashed that one through the gap and that'll run all the way to the boundary. No trouble at all. He's strong. Richard Cheek, we uh, bought in 1971 in Campbelltown. Yes, that's where there's no justice really for the bowler. He gets to the edge, catch is not taken, and then you bowl another half bowling in the big back of there and he hammers it into the hard pitch and it bounces away. Always going to be four. Richard Cheekwee was born in Camperdown, North Campbelltown, New South Wales, no wicket for 18. Cheekwee has gone to 12 now of 20. Fleming really needs to get the breakthrough here for Victoria. Three overs, one maiden, no wicket for five, so he's bowled really very well indeed, given them nothing so far. His one down to third man, and that's despite the fact that he's had two slips in the gully in there. So he's got that extra attacking fieldsman in, they're desperate for a wicket. Yes, and Damien Fleming is the main striker in this Victorian attack at one day level. An experienced young cricketer, and he needs to uh, try and get a wicket or two early on. He's certainly bowling a very good line in length, but not a lot of swing. Warm afternoon, no cloud cover whatsoever, and Fleming, if anything, just a fraction short into the pitch rather than full. If you're going to have uh, two slips in a gully, you really need to be up enticing, uh, particularly Richard Cheekley, who does give a thump off the front or back foot. You've got a chance of finding an edge there. And, and, uh, Fleming's best method probably would be to get the outswinger going, just starting it on middle and off and moving it away. I don't think it's that easy a pitch to smash the ball through the field. It's got to be pretty well pitched up. I think it's a slowish wicket out there. We could see one or two more batsmen caught. Caught in the outfield, trying to drive the ball and lofting it away. So there's just a chance that Victorians can just get them struggling a little bit. If they could just nail them down, get the odd wicket. I need to get Bevan out because he'll be deadly dangerous. Just get a couple of wickets and uh, keep it relatively tight. That'll create that little bit of edginess in the New South Wales batting lineup, and uh, that in turn can lead to wickets in itself. Well bold. Damien Fleming's certainly online, but allowing Richard Cheever to get back and have a look there while the ball's new. Just another. Half a metre up, you see that pitches in Chico, has got time to go back. Just a fraction short of Goodwin. That was fractionally further up, but still allowing Cheek be that little bit of extra time if he does get some movement. Well, Fleming's figures are excellent. 3.5 overs, no wicket for six. And at last over when Harvey conceded eight, one was the nick through the slips. The Victorian bowlers doing their job, keeping the pressure on. That's a good economy rate after almost four overs. Tidy over, just one from it. No wicket for 19. Davidson now facing Harvey, no wicket for 12. And uh, of those 12, eight runs came from the last over. So, Tony Bowles uh, get, um, getting a bit of movement there. Harvey just uh, medium pace, um, trying to swing the ball. Angling across the left handed Davidson. So, 
quite impressive young cricketer Ian Harvey he's uh, learning his trade he's a quite enthusiastic cricketer he's a good hard hitter of the ball we saw that today he got the way to a flying start and picked up three wickets with the new ball against West Australia here on Friday yes he's a former wicketkeeper from Juan Faggy and in Gippsland you've heard of that's down the coal area you've heard of coal Tony you know, they make uh, energy electricity You, have we heard of coal? It's, uh, I suppose, Australia and South Africa in competition uh, in the world markets on coal. And so, um, this is now developing to quite an interesting little match. It didn't see but one stage that Victoria had got nearly enough run, but now that's pretty well and we're seeing that it's not that easy to score runs on this pit. And Harvey's only 21 so he's opened the batting, opening the bong at 21 years of age. It's a big ask really isn't it? He's taken the three wickets, an average of 46 early days for Ian Harvey. Last ball gets an edge, races down to third man for single. That's no wicket for 20. No wicket for 20. D Davison 6, Chiqui 12. And it's going to be Damien Fleming to Continue from the members and Fleming always tidy. Four overs, one maiden, no wicket for six. Uh, over the wicket to the left hand of Davison. Hitting the back quite hard, Damien Fleming. It's a hard pitch, reasonable amount of bounce there. But uh, not as much swing for Fleming as he tends to hit it hard into the track rather than pitch up. You won't see too many pictures like this in uh, South Africa, Tony. Australians won't, from what we can gather, will they? They're talking about nice green pictures, although time will be the judge whether that's the case or not. Oh, and uh, that would have been out. That was a good effort. And a dive there to try and get home. Davison just making it back. If that had been a direct hit, it would have been all over. Bradley Hodge once again uh, showing when you're young, you've got a bit of spring in your step. He just took a while to get rid of it. He picked it up nicely and he was well balanced and just threw it and Davison was well short. Didn't miss by all that much either. That's what Victoria needed, an early breakthrough. Yes, he just set himself there and he had uh, every right to do that as well because he knew how far the batsman was out of his crease. Uh, having done that, the only mistake he made is he wasn't quite on target. I'm not sure that he gathered the ball cleanly in his hand. It was an interesting one. It seemed to be a lovely pick-up initially, but when you watch it again, did he get it cleanly in his hand? Oh, end of the fingers. So they had to sort of push it back into his hand. I think that caused a problem for him. Oh, interesting. We, we underrate Alan Border, don't we? Really misses from that position at mid wicket or cover. We saw Johnny Rhodes in a test match miss two or three in Adelaide, which you pointed out on that occasion. Bradley Hodge, 19 years of age, a good athlete, didn't quite get in the fingers. It was a good piece of fielding, just the same. That was sort of steady and uh, then was off target. That's what a series we're in for down in South Africa as well. Finna Hafani, I think it was, who was telling us uh, about how green you hoped the wickets would be. You want to be careful, Tony, don't get caught in your own trap. And McDermott used the War Brothers rifle. McGrath. I think that you're dead right. And um, in any event, Shane Warne will turn it whether it's green or not. But then again, they've got a few decent umpires down there. the gap and uh, that's a good shot so they'll go for two and they may just come back for the third yes they should so that's a better over four runs from it no wicket for 24. no wicket for 24 a beautiful day in melbourne a lovely sunday afternoon the garden state as james sutherland comes into the attack from the southern end it's been a very wet summer very few hot days in melbourne the weather of late's been indifferent almost three inches of rain on thursday but today 
is ideal. Sutherland will bowl very straight and full. He's a good uh, line bowler. And a very good one-day cricketer. Good figures from Harvey and Fleming. They're bowling well enough. They've done all right. So James Sutherland now did take up the attack from that southern stand end. Nicely fielded in the gully. Simon Cook out there who opened the bowling down in Hobart. He's been relegated to the reap right away on the onside, yes. He's been relegated to second or third change. Harris, Simon Cook, fast, big and strong, charged in, perhaps uh, tried to bowl just a little bit too fast in the last one day match, he'd have learned from that hopefully, so he's uh, suffering from it, he's going to uh, come on perhaps next. Yes well the one day games, whether it be the one day internationals or the interstate one day games, it's not an easy competition requires a lot of skill and a lot of nerve as well. You've got 10 overs to bowl and the batsman, you've only got the 50 overs. Sutherland is a very good one day bowler. Bowls with good control, he's a good clear thinker. And he'll bowl a very good line length. People underestimate the needed skill for this type of cricket. And it's not just the hit and miss he used to play in the backyard, it's a very skillful game. See Richard Chiku here, he's a very good batsman, just been tied down, so he's going to be tested here. What will he do? Will he go over the top? Well, he, he's not looking for the short singles, he's making just a fraction harder for his teammate at the other end. There's two, there's two fours in that 15, so there's a lot of dot balls in those 33 balls faced. Yes, he's not used to striking at 45 either, he's a quicker scorer than that normally. It's nicely placed. Victorians will field well. I thought they fielded very well on Friday night against uh, West Australia. A young side, so they should be uh, fleet of foot and have pretty good throwing arms. Richard Herman, 26. Young Cook in his early 20s. And uh, they're going through a learning curve. They're, they're suffering at the moment, just lacking a bit of confidence, but the selectors sticking with youth. the over no we get for 25 so now after just 10 overs and Fleming is going to continue he's bowling right arm over the wicket Chiqui is on strike and to take over in the commentary box now Simon O'Donnell and with him Richie Bennett thanks Tony afternoon everyone start here for the New South Wales batsman. All sorts of things wanted uh, by Richard Chiqui. Runs in the main. The current run rate's 2.45. And the required rate's up. Well, that's just pushing on four now. Yes. Afternoon, Simon. Good afternoon, Richie. Good afternoon, everyone. New South Wales off to a solid start. Nothing exceptional. No need for anything exceptional at this stage. Just trying to get a nice base to work from to achieve this total. 184 required total for New South Wales. They're top of the table and they're playing like it at the moment. They bowled exceptionally well, fielded exceptionally well. Now their batting will be put to the test. Chiqui and uh, Davison, the two players here, Chiqui on 17, is uh, generally very much an attacking player. Davison is uh, he's very solid, although he has got a good range of strokes. The, uh, Grime on front there, requiring a bit of uh, laundry work, came from the moment where he should have been run out, or just missing the stumps by an inch or so. 
good slower ball almost defeated Chiqui he's still good enough to get it away on the onside Chiqui has really grown in confidence in the period of time he's played for New South Wales he came into the side a year or so ago he's been in and out with depending on international duties the first string players for New South Wales he's really made his position a solid one He's improved with every match. He's a stroke player. He's got a very big future, Richard Chiqui. Nice shot. That is beautifully played. Lovely little deflection. Perfectly controlled by Richard Chiqui. That's good performance. Takes New South Wales along to no wicket for 33. No wicket for 33. Chiqui is 23. Davison is 8. Still to come, Bevan Bayless, McNamara, Lee Maxwell. It's a good batting lineup. Emery, Robertson, Ali, and Holdsworth to complete it. 11 overs. No wicket for 33. Just a bit below the required run rate. Davison's a very strong player, square of the wicket. This ground here at the MCG, absolutely magnificent, full of history. The MCG, hallways filled with many a pitcher. All different clubs here. It's part of the Melbourne Cricket Club. It's hockey. Some great photos from touring sides of yesteryear. Well judged single. Looking back to what we could say are the halls of fame here at the MCG. And there's many a famous face on the MCG walls. And I reckon right in the middle of there is a very, very famous one. And I'm lucky to be sitting right next to him. 1961 Australian captain, Richie Benno. Unusual for them to make a mistake in this uh, place, the MCG, Simon. They've just transposed the sixes and the nines. Only taken last year. It was a good team. That one was the tight test series. Wally Grout on the left, Bobby Simpson next to him. That's the back row. That Frank Misson, Ian Mecca, Les Favell, Johnny Martin, who was 12th man in the tight test. Kenny Mackay on the bottom right. Colin McDonald, skipper, then Norman O'Neill and Alan Davidson. And the first test in Brisbane was tied in that series and we won the one shown there. Davidson, O'Neill, Benno, McDonald and Mackay in the front row. Grout, Simpson, Misson, Mecca, Favell and Martin in the back row. Uh, finished up a great series. The fifth test of the series was down here. And at the end of that match there was uh, the most magnificent ticker tape welcome and farewell for the West Indies. Welcome to say that although you've been in Australia for several months. We're now saying uh, welcome and goodbye. And it was uh, one terrific series. And here in the Smoke and Tire Mutual Cup game, on the same ground, no wicket for 35, New South Wales. For Chiqui and Davison, respectively, up to 12 overs, no wicket. 35 New South Wales. They're behind Victoria at the same stage, but um, they're looking 
rather formidable at the moment. Interested spectators and Simon Cook has stopped being a spectator. He's coming into the attack. Didn't have an enormous amount of success last week in Hobart. Smacked around a little bit. None for 35 from five overs to be exact. He'll be looking for a better performance today. He's very capable of it. Spirited performer, Simon Cook. of the MCG again. Plenty of history, plenty of photos, some great places, great sporting people. It is really worth a good look around the MCG, these hallways. There's the Australian South African side, the 1953 series. Keith Miller second in from the left in the front row. Magnificent player. Two, three. That was uh, Jack Cheatham's side we played against. Neil Harvey on the left. This is front row. Keith Miller, Lindsay Hassett, Gil Langley, Arthur Morris. Back row, Alan Barnes, the uh, secretary of the Border Control in those days. Colin McDonald, Graham Hole, Bill Johnston, Doug Ring, Ray Linwall, and Jim De Corsi. And that must have been uh, the second match in the series. We played twice in Melbourne that summer. Must have been the second match because Miller and Lindwell were both injured for the final match here at the MCG and their places were taken by Jeff Noblet of South Australia and Ron Archer of Queensland. The second game. South Africa SCG and uh, a reminder that next Saturday evening will be a South Africa v Australia match that'll be from the Wanderers Club in Johannesburg South Africa limited overs international and here at the MCG it's none for 37 Copperart's low prices save you money every day this beautiful nest of tables is only $139. Coat stands are a crazy $19.95. And magazine tables are great value at just $49. But only at Copper Art Now. New Uncle Toby's fruit tops. With real fruit topping. Goodness never tasted so good. Now we get 437 New South Wales here. Need 184. And Victoria, very much in need of a wicket. They've got to get a breakthrough. Can't afford to let Davison and uh, Chiqui get cracking here. The run rate required, 3.99. Current rate still well below that, 2.81. New South Wales bat out there, 50 overs, they'll win the match. Victoria have to bowl them out. And they are in desperate need of a wicket. They lost wickets very regularly during their innings. Let's see here, especially in that last 15 odd overs, wickets tumbled at a rate of knots for Victoria. Thus far, New South Wales haven't lost one. Just fallen a little bit below the required rate to win the match. If we get in hand, they should be able to lift that again. No 
timing there for Richard Chiqui. Bats out of his crease. He's very free flower with the bat. It's a high back lift. Takes full advantage of uh, anything that's over pitched or anything that's short for that matter. But uh, certainly he underlines what Simon O'Donnell was saying about uh, being an improver. Quite a big flourish there, but he gives it a real thump when it's anywhere within uh, hitting position. Richard Chiqui's got to guard against here is there's people in the crowd aren't seeing a lot of runs and he's got to make sure that he doesn't get frustrated by it. In the middle of a very good spell here from James Sutherland. He he's a free flower. He likes to keep it moving. Make sure he doesn't get frustrated and play a shot that's not on. Yes. None for 39. Run for 39. Victoria were well ahead. Almost uh, 20 runs ahead. In the background there, Matthew Elliott is a very promising left-hand batsman. Got a good one from Shane Lee today, the uh, New South Wales medium pacer. Came between bat and pad. And, uh, nothing for Elliot to reproach himself about with that. It was just a very good delivery. There's a good uh, indication of what Simon O'Donnell was just saying, that Richard Chiqui might find himself frustrated by lack of runs. Might do something like hit down the ground and miss cue. The times I've seen him hit out, major strength is straight back over the bowler's head or over mid off. I've seen him often hit well over mid on or on the on side. He's nowhere near as strong. You can see there he tried to play a shot that isn't really his strength. Very important in one day cricket. You don't get frustrated. 50 balls he's been out there. Three boundaries in his 28 runs. His scoring rate strike rate 54.9 isn't that flash compared to what he usually does it's a good little test for him a good little education to really hang in there mentally and make sure that he does his best by his side not and learns to play a different type of game MCG in 1878. By oh, gee, how things change. It was a magnificent stadium then, if you could call it a stadium. The stands didn't cover the whole expanse of the outer of the MCG. I can assure you they definitely do now. Well, that was uh, the year of uh, the very first match between Australia and England, later designated a test match. All part of the paddock that grew, Keith Dunstan's wonderful book on uh, the MCG underlines that. I suppose in the foreground there is uh, some form of running track, a cinders track. And uh, it looks as though the pitch was running left to right as you look at your picture. None for 42. Iverson. Background, one of the old stands here at the MCG. Wasn't built in uh, the days when we were showing you the ground, 1878. That is the major roller. It could be anything, couldn't it, son? 
Oh, Richie, I, I called for another shot of that one mainly because uh, I thought it was a cannon. I thought it was part of crowd control in those days. If you got out of hand, they blew you up. So it is a roller when we have closer scrutiny of it. My mistake. And he's gone. James Sutherland has got him. The frustration Simon O'Donnell was talking about has uh, been produced by Richard Chiqui. Good bowling from Sutherland and good captaincy out there as well by Phillips. Lesson one learnt. And hopefully Richard Chiqui puts that in the exercise book of learning this great game of ours cricket. A little bit frustrated there. Couldn't overcome it. Tried to play a shot that wasn't on. He's gone for 29. New South Wales are one for 42. Very successful season for New South Wales. Mercantile Mutual, his high score is 93. Comes into the match in top four. If this place gets going, we're going to see some very, very good cricket. He can play. Great batsman to watch when he's in form and in touch, Michael Bevan. This is the way Richard Chiqui went. Inside edge onto pad, back onto the stumps. Long way down. A setback for New South Wales. James Sutherland, the man taking the wicket. He's always impressed as uh, being a very accurate bowler. Probing away, moving it off the seam. Yeah, praying Manus. He's a very smart one-day bowler. Deserved that wicket. Got a great record for Victoria over the years. Played a lot of domestic one-day cricket now and done a fantastic job. He's probably the linchpin of the Victorian attack. His experience. Really knows how to bowl at the stumps. Changes his pace a little bit. Very valuable acquisition to this one-day side for Victoria. Very good figures, one for five, and he's into his fourth over. Just one ball away from completing that. Economy rate is very good. One for 42. One for 42 after 16 overs. Field changes are possible now for the captain of the Victorian side, Wayne Phillips. Simon Cook is the bowler. Two left-handers in for New South Wales. Different styles. Ronnie Davison, man taking strike, and Michael Bevan. Rodney Davison, not as fluent as Michael Bevan. Strong square of the wicket. Likes to play the cut shot and the pull shot. Quite as agile in front of the wicket, but the man at the other end, he can play him anywhere when he gets going. here. Davison, late on the shot. Simon Cook, it's nice and quick. It was a little quicker than Davison thought then. Very late in the shot. Just pitching outside. Very, very difficult to get an LBW bowling right arm over the wicket to a left-hander. You have to bring it back fairly sharply from about middle and off the middle. Yeah, it's pitched a good three or four inches outside leg. No chance there for the affirmative decision. As Richie said, you've got to get as close to the stumps and bring the ball back into the left-hander. Very seldomly do you get one when you're going across 
the right hander. Years of age, Michael Bevan. Look at that average 66.88. 18 matches and 18 innings. He's a proven performer at this level. He'll be looking to make steps to go a little higher to the international arena. A lot of talent around. You may just have to wait a little while. A strike rate of 74.6. Bevan's still only young when you think that uh, he's made all those runs, all those centuries in Sheffield Shield, and he's only 23 years of age. He's got uh, plenty of scope for improvement in years to come. Very, very talented cricketer. Yeah. Three there of. Bevan can move quickly enough. Do it easily. One for 46. Seven overs, New South Wales. One for 46. Well behind the Victorian run rate. And now behind the microphones, Jeff Lawson and William Bill Laurie. Thank you, Simon O'Donnell. But uh, New South Wales know they need 184 for victory. Sutherland to Bevan, who's uh, certainly the danger player. He'll uh, arrive in the running between the wickets. And Michael Bevan's a fine young athlete and informed batsman. But the run rate required is uh, over four runs per over. Jeff Lawson? It's uh, picked up a little bit, that run rate. And that man on the screen there, Michael Bevan, he's the man who will get that run rate down. Very fast scoring. You just mentioned he's a good runner between the wickets. He picked up two off that last stroke when the ball just went wide and fine leg. He's got a tremendous record for New South Wales and a fabulous young player. And playing this year with a lot more discipline. One of the problems with Michael Bevan has been losing his wicket sometimes for the shot that hasn't been on. He gets a bit bored out there sometimes, Michael. It all becomes a little bit too easy for him. But this year he's really knuckled down four centuries and a double century this year, which is some pretty good batting. And in his current New South Wales lineup, he's the senior batsman. Slashes that down to third man. The man's coming around and he'll pick it up and they'll run two. Yes, that's the difference. He's taken the mantle with the pressure with all the test stars away from the New South Wales lineup. Michael Bevan and he's risen to the occasion. And some other sides, the young players uh, succumb to the pressure. Well, he seems to be enjoying it. He seems to be batting with the maturity. And when you look at his stance there, it's a beautiful stance. He's quite upright. He's uh, quite upright and you couldn't get a more relaxed stance than that. He'll give you a chance early on around about the slip cord and he likes to open the face a bit. And I'm just a bit surprised that maybe they haven't got a slip in at this stage. I know you need to defend, but I think Victoria need early wickets and I think Bevan does give you a chance in the slip cord in there. He'll open the face and uh, give you a rough chance, but if you don't get to catch those, he'll make you pay. the glide he likes to play. Look at the comparison. Victoria away to a very good start. Harvey Phillips got them away to a, at three and a half runs per over early on. Unfortunately, those blue dots caused all the problems. They had no firepower left in the final ten overs. In fact, they were bowled out. But it was a good start by Victoria. It certainly was. It looked like they'd be amassing a score around the 240 mark. The wickets was playing well and Wayne Phillips was a little slow, but Harvey was playing well. Certainly after the fall of the first wicket thing slowed down a great deal. Good over for New South Wales. The left-handers finding the gaps now. Seven runs off the over. It's one for 53. The Victorian fans, they do stick. They're a reasonable crowd in, considering Victoria cannot make the finals of the Mercantile Mitchell Cup. But there's some wonderful prizes at stake. You look down the ground and see the two signs next to the scoreboard there. The side screen. They're worth 140,000 today. Those two signs there for the straight hit. As Bevan works out backward square, gets past Hodge and through for a single. It's the Mercantile Mutual Cup. Wonderful sponsorship for the players. 
Jeff Orson and I would uh, think it was wonderful to be aiming at 140,000. There's one at mid-wicket on either side and two at each end. I wonder which of us would go after them, though, Bill. I was fond of the Hoyk three mid-wicket. Not too sure if I could hit it that far, though. It's certainly a, a superb prize, and as that jackpot's every game. Of course, that prize also available to our viewers. We get 14,000 to call in. It's a McIntyre Mutual Cup. Not a good experience for the players. Um, some money involved as far as sponsorship is concerned for the straight hits and for the home viewers. Of course, you're sitting at home. It's worth $14,000 at the moment. I'll make the team who will be the first to hit the sign and be in the running to win $1,000. That's on 0556022 I feel that might go off today. That straight hit, you know. New South Wales in the final overs with some good hitters. I was a little bit surprised in the game at uh, the Sydney Crickley any other weekend against Western Australia that one or two at the end didn't have a bit of a go. I think there was a reflection on just how sensibly New South Wales were approaching that day and Michael Bevan finished with 60 odd out. Richard Cheekley was out for 60 odd. Michael Bevan's certainly the type of player who can hit the ball a long way and hard, but New South Wales last week just content to, to bring up the victory and not chase that, that rather large cash prize. Hopefully today we might go after it. The full toss to Davidson, but they'll only pick up a single. And as always on Wild World of Sports, there's always uh, a prize for the viewers. It's a more detailed idea of what's going on. What's the name of the team you'll think will hit the sign next. Each match target is not hit it goes up by a thousand dollars it's already valued at fourteen thousand dollars that's the mercantile mutual cup hit the sign competition for our home viewers double oh double five six zero double two eight beautiful shot that's the class of bevan finding the gap the half volley on middle leg and he's punched it through and they'll run three more not a bad ball but superbly played Well, this is the difference between class and a good player. This is a classy young player, 23 years of age. We've seen some nice shots today, but none better than this one. It's nice and full on middle and leg. He doesn't try to hit it too hard. Place it just beats the man at mid-wicket. That lovely bounce over the top of the ball. and just waited for a fraction to see it had beat the, that feels when it did. It was an easy three. Certainly a man in ball, Bevan. That is the end of the over. Five off that one. New South Wales now one for 58. 19 overs. New South Wales one for 58. And they're doing it pretty well. They're behind Victoria at this stage, but they've got wickets in hand. And now the target is 184 for victory. Bevan 12 off 13. That's a difference a good player makes. He's really good from the run rate. Davidson struggling a bit. 15 off 47. That's Rod Davidson has to be the anchor of this innings now. Boss Richard Cheekley, a fast scorer. Michael Bevan out there. Hitting the ball rather well. He's 12 off 13, a strike rate around the 95 mark, and he's doing it easily. He hasn't hit the ball in the air. He's run hard and uh, timed the ball well, and that's really all he's had to do. James Sutherland. Right cut for single. Sports update at the very important Sheffield Shield match in Hobart. Day four, the final day, Tasmania needing 300 to win in two sessions and a bit. Uh, no wicket for 50. Dean Hills and Jamie Cox await a good solid start. They're looking for the six points in a very vital shield match. They've already chased and won twice down at Bell Reeve this year, Tasmania. It might be the third time. But, um, yes. But they really should have a go, regardless of the situation, because if they get six points, they're right in the chance of playing in the finals. It's a close competition. Queensland pick up two points by getting the first innings victory there, 248 against the 339. So Tasmania there in their eighth, seventh game, 14 points, six to take them to 20. Yes, you'd think they chase that target set by Queensland. The thing you've got to remember chasing those targets, you've got nothing to lose. I mean, who cares if you lose the game? Give yourself a good opportunity to win. If Tasmania could win that game and go to 20 points, the two matches left, both their remaining games are away from home, Tasmania, so that makes it a bit tougher, of course, but 
They could sneak up there to 20 points, I'm sure the other sides in the competition would have to start taking some risks themselves at the top of the table. James Savant. Bevan just content to deflect there, not trying to hit the ball harder in the air. Very much a controlled stroke from Michael Bevan. It's interesting with Rodney Davidson here, he's obviously a fine young player and he, he may very well play the shit anchor role, but he doesn't want to put it around the neck of the other batsman. You can see Bevan is uh, scoring all the time and working the ball nicely. At the other end, Davidson's done a good job, but 16 off 48. When I mean, you've got a very good batting lineup with guys like Bayless, McNamara and Lee and Maxwell to come. You've got to pace yourself at a reasonable pace. Rod Davison has a reputation from club cricket of being a reasonably steady scorer. Although he made 100 on debut for New South Wales in the second innings of the Shield game of the SCG and made a, an excellent 100 and led New South Wales to a victory. So he's capable of quick scoring, but he knows he has Michael Bevan at the other end and Bevan can score off anything. But Davison is just there for support. Well, I haven't seen him fail, Davison. He looks to be a very compact player. And Nice. Steve McCook rolling off spin. Be interesting to see whether he can deviate a few. He hasn't got a reputation of being a big spinner of the ball. And he's got a chance, Jeffrey Bowling's two left handers. That would suit him. Absolutely ideal for the off spinner to come on and the, the left handers out there spinning away from them. However, Bill, no one there to catch it. No one had slipped there is the offside field. Three men saving a single. Big arc on the offside there. They are just, just on the edge of that uh, circle. And those two men in the deep, the sweeper. It's a regulation one day field, really. The cover man out there in the mid off. Interesting time in the game with McCook bowling to Bevan. Steve McCook's an interesting selection. He's 34 years of age, and the Victorian selectors this year have basically selected a very young side, but they're looking for a spinner, and he was the one that bowls off spinner can bat a bit normally. He was run out today, unfortunately, but he picked up the wicket of Damien Martin here on Friday night. He was stumped by Barry. And that's a good start. He confuses Michael Bevan, the informed batsman. And Michael Bevan hasn't seen Steve McCook bowl. He's not quite sure what he's doing with it. This time he just plays outside the line of the ball, expecting a bit of turn, and it goes straight on. Bevan a little bit of a look at McCook just to see what he's doing. That one carried on with the arm. And Bevan watches the ball very well. Doesn't commit himself to a stroke early. Sometimes the spinner, when he sees the batsman play back, shuffle forward and back like that, they get anxious. That one turned a fraction. Michael Bevan struggled against Shane Warren. That's been a thing that most batsmen have done this summer because his big spin with his leg breaks. Steve McCook won't spin it all that far, but we've always seen the arm ball in operation of the left-hander looking for the gap between bat and pad. And he's a confident bowler. He's not a rookie by any means. Experienced district cricketer. He doesn't seem to be overawed by the situation, getting his field right. But maybe with Victoria needing to bowl them out that he could have a slip in early on. And with Roddy Davidson on strike, he brings his deep cover up inside the circle. So he's now got four on the offside, saving one. And that's perhaps the man who he brought in and saved a single, at least. So he's putting more pressure on the batsman. He doesn't want to give them an easy turnover and strike and get Michael Bevan back there. He'd rather bowl to Rodney Davidson. Good piece of feeling. Good tidy start. By McCook, it's one for 62. For 62, Victoria were two for 83. But Bevan and Davison well set here. Bevan scoring 15 off 20, Davison 16 off 52, which is not really good enough if you lose two or three quick wickets. It's OK if you bat through and everything goes according to plan. But it does put pressure on the middle order batsman as Richard Herman comes into the attack from the southern end. Right arm, medium pace. Victoria making it hard for New South Wales, bowling a pretty good line length. Determined will have to bowl a very tight line when he's bowling to Michael Bevan because he can improvise quite well. There are the Victorian bowling figures. Danny Fleming, a very good opening spell, six overs for 18. 
Sovel in the, the numbers there. Six overs, one for 15. And that first over from a cook. A very good one. Just a one run off that in the off spinner. Playing and missing outside the long stump. There's a slip in. About a fourth slip there for the edge. That's Harris. He's the man that's uh, uh, almost in the gully position. That's for the nick for the left hand. I think you should always have a slip in for left hand for the right arm bowler. Yeah, it's a, good, it's a good move, isn't it? That last ball just showed us a little bit of extra bounce, a bit of pace from Herman. And if you do go for the big drive, it, it'll go in the air around that region. It also saves a single down then. Yes, well, when a, when a left hand batsman is on strike, the right arm bowler, the natural angle always gives the bowler a chance of an edge because the batsman driving here and that's one of the disadvantages i think of being a left-handed batsman if you have a disadvantage is the fact that the right arm bowler is always coming across you even if the ball doesn't swing and that's why it's handy to have a gully or a slip in see there the ball the angle coming across he tried to hit that square if you get a bowler that can swing one back as well as the was and the good bowlers do do and um, makes all the difference you know, you get a right arm bowl like really pushes two across and swing one back. You're not sure which way they're going. Hence, you normally get caught in the slip ball by the keeper on most occasions. A bit of slow field in there by Matthew Alley. He didn't really put the fieldsman under too, batsman under too much pressure. There was some hesitation there, but he really should have been really throwing himself as it. Held the batsman on strike, but wasn't uh, really desperate enough. And there are seven men inside the circle to save a single. Just the two outside, the third man, the fine leg. And there's the offside field. We go across the leg, so they want to keep Davidson on strike and provoke strokes like that. Getting to play across the line, do something silly, and that's not a good shot from Rodney Davidson. It's the end of the 22nd over. Bringing the men inside the circle for the lieutenant of Davidson. Well, I think they wanted him inside the circle, Bill. McCook was on his way into bowl, and the man out of deep cover started to move in, as if he'd forgotten to move in for Davidson, but they're leaving him out now, so Wayne Phillips had a change of heart. And that gives him that single. They want to hurry here. The throw's not good enough. I guess the choice of ends was wrong there. I don't think you're never going to get Bevan if he responds. You might get Davidson at the other end. This is an interesting one. Although he was a way to a good start, Davidson, wasn't he? There he goes. In comes Brad Hodge. He's in with a chance. It was a slow throw, and Bevan made metres. He must get through that ball quickly, and it must be hard. Well fielded by Hodge, though. He put pressure on the batsman. Well bowled, just drifting in. Michael Bevan, a very tough man to run out. He's, he's so quick across the ground. Responded well to the call from Davidson, but I think the throw had a hit. It certainly would have put the umpire under some pressure. It was going to be close. Yes, you can't, uh, no matter how fast you are, I've never seen anybody can run faster than a good throw. And uh, Bradley Hodge was in quickly. Davidson had to start, didn't he? He was a metre and a half down. In comes Bradley Hodge. In fact, he had to go on the angle, probably did him, but it was a throw. It wasn't all that quick. He probably would have just made it. As you see, he had to circle around to his left to pick it up on his right hand, and that was the difference. Nice use of the feet there, but just the single. Four off the over, one for 67. The Olympic Winter Games on Channel 9. Tonight, join a massive worldwide television audience at the spectacular opening ceremony of the 17th Olympic Winter Games. The Australian team join over 2,000 athletes from 65 nations as the Olympic flame is lit, signalling the start of 16 days competition at this truly international festival of sports. The Winter Olympics commence 8.30 tonight, only on Channel 9. 1467, it's determined to continue to Rodney Davison. Davison 18 of 60, Bevan 18 of 24. We are showing you before some of the history of the Melbourne Cricket Ground and daily tours come through the Melbourne Cricket Ground now. There's uh, Victor Trumper on the wall there, that big uh, famous photograph dancing down the pitch. And uh, a lot of cricket history. Whether you like cricket or not, there were some wonderful uh, cartoons as well. And 
cricket and baseball and there's Jeff Lawson there looking young and happy. You can only get grumpy when you get dropped out the side, Jeff, don't you, or you retire. Well, certainly young then, there's no doubt about that. A few years ago. Kim Hughes, Graham Wood. Yeah, Wood there, Rodney Malcolm Hogg, I think he's still playing thinking around Melbourne. Alan Border hasn't changed as scary, I don't think. A young Craig McDermott. I think that was Craig McDermott's debut in Test Cricket. David Byrne even looks tall. Does he look tall? No, thin. Yeah, he looks slim. And Steve Rickson. No. Steve Rickson now, coach of New South Wales. Yes, daily tours at the MCG are very popular. And Richie Richardson, Joel Garner, that's working right to left. Courtney Walsh, Larry Gomes. Viv, uh, Clive Lloyd, the captain in the middle, followed by Viv Richards, Michael Holding, and the rest of a very good West Indian side. So if you're visiting Melbourne, it's well worth the trip to come down to the Melbourne Cricket Ground and go through the museum and uh, see all the history of the football and cricket, baseball, uh, the famous Melbourne Cricket Club. Gee, there's two good Channel 9 commentators there. Simon, Simon's not happy. He's had a loss at the races. He's lost, lost, a, lost on the punt the night before. So uh, when you come down to the Melbourne Cricket Ground, uh, join in one of the tours. They're free. And you can see a lot of cricket memorabilia and modern players, the old players. There's both in that picture. There's Bobby Holland and a few of the modern players as well. Jeremy Coney, the New Zealander, in the middle of the photograph there. Greg Matthews. There's a nice shot there, but straight to the field. Mid wicket. That's one for 68. Struggling, but just falling behind a bit. They won't want to lose two or three quick wickets here. They have some 19 off 62. Puts a lot of pressure on Michael Bevan to keep the scoring up. And he must share the strike. He must share the responsibility of scoring runs as well. Maybe a good move right now for Wayne Phillips to put a man in and attack. Davison put a short catcher there on the offside. Don't bowl that short and put a catcher in though. The previous delivery was the right one to bowl. So pick a single up. James Sutherland out in the deep. But I think really think Victoria need a wicket or two now, Bill. They can't afford to let New South Wales just go along. The run rate's 4.4, which is not a huge ask. I'm sure New South Wales are happy with their situation. And Cook's bowled, McCook's bowled a couple of good overs. Let's get someone in there and attack him. Put some pressure on him. I agree they need wickets. Uh, I think you did right if they pick up Neil Bevan and maybe one of the next batsmen quickly and then all of a sudden that run rate becomes very high. But while you've got a Bevan in form there, he always scored four and a half runs per over when needed. But McCook bowling quite well. Not getting a lot of turn. Hodge coming in quickly from cover point. There's five men inside the circle and that's good tactics by Phillips. Uh, maybe they need a close catcher in that area there somewhere for the, the bat pad that gets squirted out. Oh. I'd rather have a slip. It's amazing how you think. Is I reckon to the to the left-hander that um, you've always got a chance of getting a catch in the slip. A guy coming in and spinning away, and if he drives. Um, always a chance of an edge. It just makes the batsman uh, a bit more wary if he wants to angle the face of the bat away towards third man. Just a single there. Two off the over. It's a good battle. One for 70. That's one for 70. Richard term continues as Michael Whitney and Richie Bonneau take up the commentary. Thanks, Bill. The wicket needed by Victoria, even though the New South Welshman uh, are 30 runs behind Victoria on that note there. They still have wickets in hand need to set them back as indeed New South Wales set back Victoria by taking wickets round about this time. Nothing slows the scoring rate better than uh, taking wickets, one or two or three. Michael Bevan is 20 from 33 balls. Rodney Davison, 20 from 64. And uh, there's a little starter. It might be just what's needed, Michael. Yes, Richie, very good shots from this man. 
Rod Davidson, very good young player from the Ramwick Cricket Club in Sydney. Looking to force a bit of the pace and hitting over the top of the infield there. Very quick to pounce on anything that's up and around there that was actually taken off, off stump. And raced away for a boundary. That's the way the Victorian innings looked down on the bottom. New South Wales have moved along very smoothly now at the same stage. We're just coming up to the taking of the third Victorian wicket. That's what set them back. Then they suddenly lost two more and one over. Man bowling at the moment, Richard Herman, was one of them. There's half chances. They've got to be grabbed. This Bill Laurie was just mentioning the fact that he would have had a slip into the, the spinner, McCook. But now just a half chance, just a little bit wide of Darren Berry, the keeper. Made a despairing dive. Probably wouldn't have carried to him, but in fact, it probably wouldn't have carried if there had been a slip there. Davidson, oh yes, I think it might have carried. Davidson looking to work that ball. Oh, and that one's hit him in the face. I guess hit him in the neck. Not a lot of damage done. Oh no, just on the lip there. A little sensation of blood. Coming from Rodney Davidson's mouth. Trying the pull shot. Ball a little bit short, but oh, Davidson there. I'll tell you what, very lucky not to knock his bales off as well. Top edge, it looked like. Went from uh, top edge of the bat, I think up on to uh, the left-hand side of his mouth. And the problem there is that uh, you can have jaw damage. The ball hits you like that. You can just uh, knock things a bit out of plumb. But Davison won't want to come off. That's the first thing about it. You know that there's fierce competition in the New South Wales side, but sometimes you can do yourself damage by insisting you're OK and that uh, you'll stay on. He's a pretty tough customer, and that's the New South Wales 12th man, Adam Gilchrist, obviously with a, a wet towel and a towel that's been sitting in the ice in the dressing room, which is just about customary in most dressing rooms. A little bit of ice and a cold towel in case something like this happens, but he doesn't look to be in any trouble. And he'll continue on. He'll have a fat lip tonight, reminiscent of a professional boxer. It's a very good... Very good young player, Rod Davidson. He's a tough customer. I've played a lot of club cricket with him. He comes from, as I mentioned, uh, the club I play for, Ramwick, and uh, loves his batting. One of the galloping greens dressed in blue. Seven from that over, one for 77. For 77, New South Wales, Victoria, two for 103 at the same stage. Michael Bevan, certainly the form player in the New South Wales lineup, fresh from a double century in Western Australia. 60 odd not out last weekend in the Mercantile Mutual Cup game, which was the game following the Shield match, which I think is a superb format, the four day Shield game and then the one day on the Sunday. And looks to be in fairly good touch here again today at the MCG. unusual grip the cook has. Uh, he spreads his fingers in the normal way. Nice placement by Bevan. He seems to be bowling with a uh, considerable amount of side spin. The index finger on the right hand is uh, on the seam of the ball. There's quite a bit of side spin, not all that much overspin. a look at the the worms that we call them the run rate New South Wales side underneath 
Victorian yellow line there. And I'm sure they feel that they're in good control at the moment. New South Wales, 27th over, a one for 80. Four behind Victoria at the same stage. Richard Herman is the bowler. New South Wales with a handy batting lineup to come. Bayless, McNamara, Lee, Maxwell. Phil Emery, the captain. Robertson. Phil Alley and Wayne Holdsworth all can score handy runs even down at the tail. Very good piece of fielding there. Michael Bevan trying to whip the ball away. Young Bradley Hodge with the sunglasses on. Whip the ball away square on the leg side and got it pretty well. Hodge committing the body there. An excellent piece of ground fielding. They really do need a wicket, Victoria. They're keeping the run, the run rate down as such, but important for them to really put a stop. And Davidson and Michael Bevan are really settling in here. They'll be looking to get some rhythm about their play. No. Obviously, the longer that they spend at the crease, the more comfortable they will become with the pace of the wicket. Rod Davidson's been there for a long time already. And there's the equation, 104 runs at 4.65. The big one is nine wickets in hand. So they've got really wickets to throw away. The job for the Vicks, a couple of quick wickets. And there's one. Well, that is the one they so desperately wanted. The dismay in the New South Wales dressing room at 12. Kiss is all right, I guess, but uh, not too sure it was that valuable a uh, wicket. <laughs> There's the Yorker, Robert Herman. Michael Bevan trying to flick that one away in one of his strengths, one of the onside. Ball sneaking through, finding a little gap. Bevan goes for 22, bold Herman. New South Wales are two for 80. After the dismissal of Bevan, bowled by Herman. Or 22, just trying to work the ball away. That is um, a great performance from Herman out on the field there. The Victorians would be desperately I'm watching that. I'm not sure who it was there, but uh, certainly showing an outpouring of emotions. That was a very good Yorker. Well, he shall remain nameless, as indeed <laughs> shall she. <Yeah. laughs> oh, and there's the man at the crease with a job to do, Trevor Bayliss, having the side screen move, a veteran of New South Wales cricket. 27 domestic one-day games for the Blues and uh, has been a fine player for New South Wales. Scored a double century for his club, Penrith, not that long ago in club cricket, so he's in pretty good form. I'm very happy to be back into the, into the team and I'm sure the selectors have included him because of his experience. Very good in the field as well. Handy bowler of all sorts. I'm sure he'd be happy that I've said that. But can be an extremely punishing batsman when he gets a bit of rhythm about his game. Now Steve McCook is the bowler. Well, 4.1 overs for 11 runs now. He's done a good job. Only just come into the Victorian side. Experienced bowler, not a young player. But he's bowled uh, a good length. His direction has been good here today. And uh, he's been quite prepared to give the ball a bit of air. No one's persuaded him to jag it in straight at uh, leg stump, flat. Rodney Davidson, a very good worker of the ball. Here's a look at Trevor Bayliss's career statistics 27 domestic one days for the blues probably that average is a little lower than what he would like but there's been some very explosive innings 
in his career. Strike rate of 64.5 runs. High score of 92. Been a good player for the Blues. Bit of a stalwart, Trevor Bayless. Over the 30-year-old mark now. Hunting 31. He'll be looking to get on with the job now and, and really do a good job for his team. Wait. The fact that Bevan has gone has uh, made a big difference. Not just the loss of the wicket, but the fact that Bevan is uh, such an attacking player. Now, it didn't matter so much that New South Wales were behind the required run rate because they had plenty of batting to come and they had Bevan. But, different situation now. In. Excellent line and length. Absolute perfect delivery for the spinner to bowl. Coming round the wicket to the left-hander. Trying to pitch the ball in and around middle and leg, turning away.